All right, three, Currently. two, one, go. All right, let's do a toast to our very first podcast, guys. We finally did it. We've been through some hell to get here, but <laughs> his glass is empty. <laughs> you got a little sip of Rooney in there. <laughs> All right, guys. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Modern Goonies podcast. I'm your host, Trevor King Miner, and on the mic today, we've got my good friend Sawyer. Hi. There we <clears> go. <throat> and then we got my other good friend, Harrison Hoyt. Hi. So, I just want to let you guys know, we had been through fucking hell to get this thing started. <laughs> so, about a month ago, we started this podcast, and we got, it, it was with Harrison and another friend of mine, Chandler, and we got about an hour in or so, give or take, and I realized I never hit record on any of the stuff. It was painful. And then, tonight, we had originally started, we started about an hour ago, I would say we got pretty close to an hour of content and my computer just did an automatic update, which I don't have that. I don't even have. I don't even have that turned on, so I don't know how the fuck that happened. And it just did it in the middle of our fucking podcast. Fucking Max. Click save, and it didn't save it. So all of that is gone. So we had to completely start over. So this is like our fucking fourth attempt. But here we are. We're doing our shit, and I guess I should tell you what this podcast is about. Well, hey, first off, if you are easily offended and you don't like profanity, this is definitely not the fucking place for you, man. Uh, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. Just leave, just leave. We don't want you here. No, seriously. But we, we, we curse Freak a lot, off. and this is this is pretty much a lot of locker room talk. So if you're easily offended, don't watch our shit. Grab her by the pussy. All right. <laughs> don't do <laughs> right that. Right out of the it's, gate. It's a joke. Right? That don't a joke. grab. That was a joke. Don't. We, we don't support grab her by her heartstrings there we whoever go. she is don't <laughs> grab her by that um so basically what this podcast is is we have this uh really big group of friends there's like 12 of us and a lot of the times we would just we would sit around into the late hours of the night and we would we would just be bullshitting but it would be about really cool stuff um and we were always like why don't we why don't we uh like record what we're saying but no one ever did it and finally i'm like hey the stuff that we talk about is actually really cool so let's why don't we why don't we record it and just put it up on YouTube or wherever. And if someone wants to watch it, cool. If not, we get to sit around in front of fucking cool microphones and talk about cool shit. So here we are, you know, a couple months later, and we're just doing that. So what you're, what you're going to see is a revolving door of uh, people from the friend group talking. So the two people you see on right now, you might not see on again for a little bit, or you might see them on the next one. Either way, we're basically just going to cycle out all the main friends, all the main 12 people from the friend group. Uh, I will be the consistent one. I'm the host. Other than that, it's pretty much fair game for whoever wants to be on. Um, so why don't we get right into it? Let's just start talking about shit. What's up, guys? How the fuck are we doing on our fourth attempt tonight? Shit, man. I'm doing good. I'm tired, but I'm good. Yeah, I, I'm definitely, like I said a minute ago, I'm going into this more drunk than I was. I learned nothing about uh, driving. Yeah. Okay, what I rode my Crystal Gale shirt. Other than that, it was pretty good. The mead's, the mead's making me more tired. So Sawyer Sawyer made his own mead. What a segue. I don't want to say specifically <laughs> for this, but he, he, he's been it making is. it for a while, and it's pretty damn good, and we've just been sipping on We look like a bunch of pretentious fucks right now, but it's good. It's some good shit. So it, uh, mango and pear. That's how we The pear just kind of tastes like... Uh, eh. <laughs> That's how we can... Eh. Eh. They're locking pinkies and drink. They're having a moment on the podcast right now. Anything. You guys yeah, are you're you guys are adorable. You're adorable. Thanks, babe. You're adorable. Yeah, suck. Oh, I suck the skin right off your ass. Oh <laughs> all right. Right out the gate with <laughs> just off the ass. Yeah. Off that a whole ass. All right. <laughs> I'm freaking I'm paranoid now. I'm checking the lot the program every just fucking leave it two up, minutes. Dude. I don't know. I like the background just up. What do you? What it's pretty tight. Yeah, yeah, I get it. But yeah, if like you're paranoid, background. it's not like that's a bad. I mean, look. I can see the red down there, oh, okay. so I guess it's not a bad look. I so, um, the first topic of the night, we have a cool, we have a couple cool things after you know talking for a little bit that we want to we want to discuss. Um, I think the first thing we're going to talk about though, uh, it, it's where we left off. We were hoping we were going to be able to stitch the two audio points together so we could just pick up right where we left off. But uh, Harrison was going into a segment. And he was talking about. Um, some of his issues with social media, and he just got into. Is it fair to call it a Twitter war, or it's a beef? Cancer. A beef. It's it's a it's a Twitter <laughs> cancer beef. 
that he had no, no, with no, somebody. No. Have a beef cancer. Beef it's cancer. Twitter beef cancer. Um, <laughs> Vegans are going wild at this. Cancer beef makes you sound like <laughs> he ate he ate beef and got cancer. No, cancer beef makes you sound like the beef was about cancer. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, well, I mean, it, I mean, I don't know. Not that the topic's any better. Yeah. So. We're, we're going to listen to him, and he's going to try as tactfully as he can to discuss this little war that he uh, he got into um, and his thoughts on social media. And then so. we'll we'll keep the ball rolling from there. We'll talk about some of the other cool points. Um, I have a really cool story I want to tell of what happened today that I'm fucking super stoked about. And then Sawyer's just sex. I mean, just look at him, man. He's fucking, he's just looking at, he doesn't even need to talk. He's just going to fucking, he's going to be our wingman over Dude, there just sitting there. When like, you think about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's going to do the whole time. All right, so Harrison, why don't you why don't you why don't you jump in whenever we can not oh, laugh? Oh man, well to to kind of damper a little happiness on the subject. <laughs> so I'm not gonna get too in depth to it, mainly because I don't want to give the spotlight to a lot of the people. Well, I say a lot of the people, but mainly the person. Okay. That this kind of happened with so. For a long time, well, I say for a long time, a couple months now, I've been dealing with a lot of, like, I don't really care about people's opinions anymore, like, on social media. I'd say, I, I think it's a fair statement to say that you, you never cared that much in the first place. Well, I, I mean, I, when I say that, I mean as in, like, how I was kind of saying a bit ago, is that, like, when you... It just, this is just my... I've almost, like, back when I was, like, on Facebook, like, I mean, I, we've all done some cringy shit. I've no... No challenge. I've done a lot of it. But, like, now that I've gotten older, I usually keep my, just my problems to myself. Okay. It, unless it's, like, if, if my mom had, like, some bad accident, I would obviously talk about it. Like, hey, you know, maybe start a GoFundMe or something. At most, you know. I wouldn't do anything, like, p- pity me victim thing. But I just, I'm not a fan of just first world problem Poor me bullshit. Poor me pity thing. Okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's something to talk about, too, because a lot of people will argue that, oh, well, you know, social media is the only outlet. Well, sure, and I have I've, I've dealt, I have dealt, a friend that deals with I have two friends, well, mainly the other one that deals with it. He's gotten a lot better with it now, but he, t- you know, he said, well, I kind of use it as my journal. And I'm like, yeah, dude, it's, I mean, if that's what you got to do, sure. But then he came back to me, he's like, you know what I found different, though? He's like, writing it down has helped me a lot. And just, yeah. just kind of, I mean, talking about it like we are. Well, I was gonna... and I think that's better because social media t- to me it gets it, not even just Twitter but like you know Facebook can be bad Twitter can be bad I mean Instagram can be bad too it can all be demonized I say demonized it can all be toxic. just kind of toxic and I wouldn't even call it toxic but depressing that's mm-hmm. probably the best word yeah and not to shame you for being depressing or like going through issues everyone goes through issues it's just the thing with me is I just don't like to talk about it because I don't, I don't like, even if I was single or with my fiance at, currently, I just don't like talking about my issues that much. Okay. And, um, I've just been like recently, I've just been like, I, I think I'm going to delete Twitter and then just Twitter, mainly Twitter, because there's a lot more depressing stuff on Twitter. Keeping my Facebook for more families. I, I think it's a generational thing. I for easily, sure. It's our generation. 100%. I usually get fucking pissed when I scroll through Twitter. Like, oh, straight yeah. up, dude, it's... A it's lot like, of it's my humor. Well, no, it's but, like, I've noticed that it's either romanticized or funny to be depressed. You know what I mean? Like, it's yep. it's cool now. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. not to say that depression, like, everyone's no. faking it. For sure. But, like, it's totally, like, cool. Like, anxiety and depression, they always go hand in hand. Self, like, self uh, what is it called? Um, not self-medicating, self-diagnosing. Yeah. That's... Oh, but it's, it's just, like... I can't take it. Totally lost my train of thought. I'm sorry. It's, I know, it's, it's, I know like people yeah, put it in their become, bios. Yeah. People make that their identity. Like, haha, anxiety, depressed. I like memes and cats. Yeah, it's yeah, like, no, yeah, one hundred percent. That's that's definitely. Anyways, continue on, continue on with the so, so what happened. This solidified me wanting to delete it. What okay, I'm about to tell you. So, like I said, I'm gonna leave most details out. But what happened was, so a couple of months, maybe even just a month back, this girl was either making fun of a band. Or some or a group of people. I don't remember. It was a bit ago, and she put her opinion out there. Like, I mean, that's the good thing about Twitter. You can like you can talk um, about whatever you want, and she had every right to. And so she said that. Sorry, I got a burp. Sorry, that's hot. And uh, she uh, she she made her opinion, and then the whole like community of the music scene that she's involved with 
was roasting her about it. Like that's stupid. Is it worth just making fun of which scene? Specifically, music scene, the hardcore scene, I guess. But like, um, and so what happened was, as she was getting shit on, because it was just clearly a an like an insane opinion she made. Right. She said, "Stop making fun of me. I have autism." Okay, I did see a little bit of this that you yeah. put in the group chat. Now, I, I didn't. I didn't go too in depth of reading it though. But now I'll give my opinion on that later. But okay. that's what she said, and then. I didn't say anything at that point. I remember reading it thinking, fuck you. Like, shut the fuck oh my up. God. I was like, whatever. I was like, I'm. it's not even worth getting into. I, I saw some comments. I was like, whatever. That happened like um, at least a month ago. And then recently, she came back on my timeline on Twitter because someone was like, posted a screenshot of her because she blocked him. Mm. And he said, what a nerd, LOL. I was like, what does she do now? And he was like, probably block me for liking this specific local band. I was like, dude, leave her alone. She has autism. Right. Now, I will say, probably shouldn't have said it. I'll just be real. I, I mean, probably shouldn't it's have. It's good that you're I'm so honest That's with fine. yourself. Like, yeah. you know, I, I mean, sure, I'll take that. But with th- this happened, and then three days later, someone in the music scene blew it out of proportion like they went down on there and they were like this ain't it chief and i was just I was like okay and then it's and he was like a real i wouldn't say real i guess you could say real big in a local scene for a band that's known by everyone and uh then this girl came out of nowhere and was just saying like shut the fuck up forever like it got blown out of proportion i was like i probably should have saw this coming and so and again oh yeah i kind of skipped over why i said that so I'll be honest, I don't believe that she has it. And uh, if she does, then I apologize. I'll just go ahead and apologize. But either way, if she had autism or not, I think to play the victim when you give your opinion is a cop-out, no matter if you have autism or not. If you have the ability to say something... That you know you can, in you some should, way is going to stir yeah. the pot. Using yeah. your, you know, who, and this is why I don't believe she has autism. Most of the people that have autism don't victimize themselves for having well, autism. That's I wanna, just. I want to interject go here for it, because autism is a, a spectrum. Yeah, well, for so, sure. Yeah. And that, that's like, another yeah. thing. Yeah. If she has like Asperger's. What level of autism? If she has like a mild right, Asperger's right. or something. Right. And I, I was going to say this earlier. That might be why she said that. And of because course. Because it's a social, it, it can be a real social disorder. Sure. And I mean, like I said, like if she does, I apologize. But if you're going like if you're pulling that bullshit card like how people say like dude, I'm like three fourths Cherokee type people. Well you're right. You should never like start shit and then What did you expect? Use something irrelevant to like, dude, stop I have cancer. It's like what? What does that have to do with exactly. anything? Exactly. Like, you just, just, you just stabbed a man. You can't pull that. What the fuck? It's just that playing devil's advocate, yeah. autism adds a new layer to that. Right. Because it's typically a social disorder. Right. Yeah. Well, and so she doesn't know if she has autism or Asperger's. Like, she doesn't know how to communicate like we do. Right. Oh, shit. We're, well, going, we're going right out the gate with some heavy stuff, guys. Well, well it's just the fact no, that No, that's matter. true. That's true. But... Like I said, I'm self-aware. I probably shouldn't have said it knowing in the times of where we're at in social media where SJWs are not, it's going to be demonized. And it got demonized. By the way, the girl that came at me has nothing to do with the girl I'm talking about. These are two different people. One of them I haven't heard from at all. Do they know each other? Probably. Okay. I assume. she. She's. I wouldn't say she's big either, but she's pretty well known. No. Okay, now when, now when you say that, like, in, are they, the part, gr- the of a, girl, are they a part the, of the band so or the, they're no. just the kind band, of like influencers in the the band is a local popular band and she's close with them the music scene as a whole these two girls kind of contribute to it to an extent okay except for one of them the one that came after me doesn't really contribute okay but uh so basically she was coming at me and saying like you know shut the fuck up forever and then i wasn't commenting yet and then she came out of nowhere and she said doesn't surprise me though coming from a guy that thought it was funny to fake a pregnancy and i was like what and dude i don't even know okay the context behind this if you don't remember this so my old twitter before you do remember i yeah okay so before i got banned on my old twitter (laughs) 
What a great follow Jesus. up to the autism I got banned. Comment. I got banned for. By the way, I if I didn't tell you, I got banned for years on my last Twitter. Because, <laughs> okay. Well, are you able to give any? Yes. I, I, talk I, shit, I actually. I'm I talk shit on Trump. Let's not sidetrack too much. I talk shit on Trump. Okay. That's why I got anyway. Okay. On that Twitter, which is still up, you can go look there. I think it was on that. So like, at least a year or more ago. For April Fools, me and Lane decided to do a fake pregnancy. Now, we did this because I was like, "Who's going to unfollow me?" Because I'm going to be honest with you, most of the people that have kids, I almost always unfollow them. That's just my opinion. I, it's going to happen to me eventually, and I'm going to be like, "Well, I'm a, I'm a hypocrite," but that's just what I've done. Like a it's lot of fine people, to not be interested. Yeah, and it's just because like I don't want to constantly see a spam of your kid. No well, shame on thing. that. It, yeah, but, it's like your kid will consume your life, and that you know yeah, your social that's media fair. will reflect Absolutely. that. That's completely fair. It's not personal if you don't want to follow them. So I did that to see who's going to unfollow me and who's going to be supportive of it. And I did it on all social media. Now, I don't think my dad or my mom knew in context. But I think I just did it on Twitter. Anyway, okay. I did it. And on April Fool's, I post a picture of me with my gut all out, me holding it. It's like, it's a food baby. And then everyone was like, not one person at the time demonized it. Like, everyone was like, oh, that's cool. Y'all make some great pictures. Everyone was supportive. I was like, hell yeah. I love my friends. <laughs> and she brought this out of context. I was like, dude, that was a year ago. Well, and why, and then, now, what, in the other context, why she blew that out of proportion? She had a miscarriage, like, a couple years back. So she was she's super sensitive to the subject. Right, of, but for her to... I, for her to say it the way she did is a little right. Because, she, because she that up. makes you because that makes you sound like a fucking. She was, that, that's she, was not, she was looking for a reason to demonize anything. Yeah, that, well, that's more. That, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go for there's it. more to it when they when people roast you for faking a pregnancy. It's usually because your partner faked it, and you thought your life just flashed before your eyes. When a couple fakes a pregnancy to their audience, it's not the same. Like you're not changing anyone's life but your own. Okay, I, I think you see. Here's my issue with this so far: is that. For her to use the term "faking a pregnancy," that that's a little that's a little misleading because that's like when I when I hear "faking a pregnancy," I think of like, dude, like we like we're gonna get all this attention if we act like we're pregnant and uh, and blah blah blah, and then it turns out like they do all the shifty shit to uh, before people realize that they aren't right. pregnant. Well, but 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 for her to say that, I don't think that's fair as as what you did as well, making an April Fool's what, joke. What I told her was, I said, that was blown so out of proportion. Yeah, and I said, yeah. but go ahead and reach for it. And I'm just like, go ahead. You should have been like, did you stretch before you reached for that? But I like yeah. saying there that. was a lot of, th well, like, you know, at one point, I mean, to kind of skip over a lot of the arguments that was made, eventually I just stopped because there was no need to do it because right. she, it wouldn't matter what I said. Like, it wouldn't matter if I said, I, I mean, my fiance take care of her autistic brother a lot of the times. She would probably th she did think it was a cop. She's like, oh, shut the fuck up, yawn. Like she was just all that. It wouldn't have mattered what I said, and that's fine because she doesn't matter to me. And I, I well, some I arguments give a aren't worth less. They aren't, they aren't worth fighting. It's not. And like I know. And the thing is, like a lot of this comes back to, you know, she went for the pe she went after the people also that commented under me saying, leave her alone. She has autism. And none of like only one person laughed at it. I take that back. There's like two, and the other one, the other guy was like, "Bro, no." And you know, after this whole argument thing, to skip a lot ahead forward, I I thought that was the end of it because there was no one else coming after me. Whatever, like I had no sub sub tweets about me that I'd seen so far, even from the girl that this had everything to do with. I went and looked and see if she did on her Twitter, and she did. She posted a screenshot of my Twitter and everything, and. She didn't make any threats. I mean, I'm not worried. I mean, again, I'm not worried about people, period, so I don't care. But um, one of the guys' name, I'm not, well, not going to say his name, but one of the guys that had to do with it, I started seeing on Twitter he was getting shit for it. Mm. And he said, your friends are pieces of shit. I'm like, I bet, first of all, I barely know this dude. And I was like, I've met him like a handful of times. Nice guy. But like, I, his friends. I was like, dude, he, all he did was interact with what I said, and he's canceled? Dude, come at me all you want. That's fine. What, is that, like, what, what is that term, canceled? Oh, yeah. That so mean? that's a new term. Uh, I haven't heard this It's before. not that new, though. That's It's pretty much Twitter, trying to de-platform someone. Like, if, uh, you, if you said, like, the R word. Okay. Like, you're shut down. Like, you can't say that shit. Yeah, they want you to be bombarded. You want, you're trying to be want, PC as hell. They want you shamed off social media. Yeah. Oh, if, you're not, point, if, you're not, to, if you're not politically correct, you're To the point, completely. yeah, okay, so, like, you yeah. say something that's controversial or something that people don't like. 
like from that point on, your your opinion is literally invalidated yes, exactly. because they're like, okay, no, you can't, you can't no, even be on here anymore. So wait, am I wrong? Is it not? No, tr- right. Is it not trying to deplatform someone? Like when you're trying to cancel be. someone? It can be. It can be. I thought it was like, hey, shame this guy off Twitter. Let's cancel him. I mean, if you want to take it that way, Alex Jones was canceled. I just thought but. that was the new term. I mean, it, it makes it's, sense. It's, it's got it's got multiple definitions, but like the white girl canceled is like, you're shut down. Get out of here. Like, oh. You don't respect women's rights, or just just saying something out of context and then taking it way too far. Mm-hmm. That's like what a lot of can, like normal canceling on Twitter. Well, that's Twitter, become, Twitter keyed that. That's a lot. become a like a huge thing lately. Oh, pro- though, too. Call out all that call out culture shit. Exactly. All that shit. It's bad. Like okay, that's to an worth extent. getting into, and that that's been beat to death, honestly, in a lot of conversations. What I what I sure. can't stand, cancel culture is what I pretty cannot stand about the whole call out culture cancel c- cancel culture shit is taking the size of people you have no idea about it's just bullshit like there's a lot even besides me i've seen it a lot and this is another reason i'm just like i'm so tired of the negative bullshit on twitter right like now i cause my own bullshit like i'll take that but like there's a lot of people that like people will make and this this just doesn't even have to do with the people i know but like just in general on social media people will say one person raped someone Mm. And with no context, they will believe them because of their social status. <clears throat> and the other person is like, oh, I've heard some bad things about that guy, but no proof. So fuck that dude. A lot of that happens with, like, even musicians. Like, they'll, mm-hmm. like, oh, I heard that motherfucker was, like, right, just doing shitty stuff. And it's like, you have no proof of it. There's no evidence of it, but you're just going to take it aside because it's the cool you thing. You immediately, <clears throat> yeah. It's, well, it's, it depends. I mean, like, now I will say now all it of it depends on like if not all of it's bad. A like lot of sometimes it sometimes yeah. there's a lot of like testimonies. So if like there's yeah. thirty people saying like, yeah, he did that to me too. I'll I'll start to consider it's it's worth considering yeah. it at least. Usually when there's like thirty people, it's I'm, just a, it's a really I've, hard thing to go for because obviously I've chosen my side when there's like that many people. I, I, I think I, I think no matter no matter what it is, I think the opinion should be considered. If someone says that, right? There should be a legitimate inquiry as to, is that true? Absolutely. It, it, I mean, it doesn't matter if one person says it, if four people say it. If some, if a claim like that is made, it should be looked into. Well, that's why I said it's at least worth considering when a lot of people. Well, come right, out. right, right, and, and that's what yeah. I'm saying. I'm saying that it's worth looking into, but that doesn't mean, 100 percent worth looking into, but that doesn't mean that you can just jump to the immediate conclusion that yeah. that person is Even wrong. That, wanna, that is where it's wrong. I want to add a a layer to that, which is something i hate and that's virtue signaling i feel like that's a lot yeah. of a um call out cultures people get off on it elaborate people, well, people, you know what virtue signaling uh, is it's doing the so. right thing just to be seen oh yeah and i think that's what yeah, a lot of it yeah. is, is they'll call them out because then it's like oh look at this moral upstanding yeah. citizen who did okay. this and they they shut down harrison for you for saying that this chick was autistic like oh, yeah well, so like I, i'm so i'm such a good person now that i did that like exactly yeah. so yeah. Yeah. like Good Samaritan bullshit. I like to imagine that if you had a problem with someone, you would talk to him about it. Let's, yeah. let's say uh, I, I, let's say Harrison made a joke, and I was like, "Did you just call my mom a bitch?" There's t- there's two ways to go about that. There's social justice, where I can be like, "Hey, cancel this fool," or I can message him and be like, "Hey, were you calling my mom a bitch? I don't appreciate the that." The funniest part of the the good point you're making about this is so many people will have the biggest voices on social media. In yeah. real life, well, that's quiet. That's <clears throat> exactly, but it's an issue. Yeah. It's because we can settle beef just yeah. each yeah. other. You don't have to fight. I can, exactly. I can yeah. understand where he was coming from, maybe, and maybe he'll delete the tweet because he felt bad and he understood yeah. what I was saying. Oh, I delete. I delete everything. With cancel yeah. culture, it's like, hey, fuck this guy. Everyone brig- brigade him. Exactly, and, and you see, that's how gaslighting. I, that, that's how yeah. I know it's bullshit because if you legitimately wanted to solve the the issue, right? Like you did take offense to it. You would have that conversation, but instead you're. T- and, and, but he, here's the thing: when you take it to that platform, it is about the virtue signaling because, um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, it, even if you did admit your wrongdoing, you put a tweet out and you're like, "What I said was offensive, and I'm sorry that I did it." You are still canceled. Yeah. It doesn't matter yeah. that you apologize. And say you really did see the error of your ways. Like you realized you were wrong. And you're like, "Well, I'm legitimately sorry for what I said." People don't care. Here's another because thing. they've already called you out. People people would rather see people suffer than fix it. 
Exactly. Yeah. And that's a lot of problems, that's too. A, that's I, whole, I dealt with a lot of, and like... And then another layer that adds is the whole yeah. tribalism mentality, yeah. which is a big yeah. political thing where it's like a group think. You know, you're part of this um, clique or maybe a larger group than you would consider a clique. And it's like, well, this is what's going on now. I'm going to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, fuck you. Here's my tweet. And so, in, in, in some more context, let's say... So, one of the Catholic bishops recently tweeted... Hey, you don't support gay pride, don't oh, go to yeah, parades, blah, blah, blah. Okay, if you're going to publicly disparage like a Oof. group or something. It's a bold obviously, statement from obviously, a Catholic group. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, bold statement. That's part of the reason there's so much backlash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, <clears throat> like, at that point, like, it, it makes sense for people to publicly reply to right. your public tweet. Yeah. That's, see, that's the, my point, though, about the whole social media thing. And especially when it's like a big public figure. But if I were to make an offensive joke that targets a niche... A niche, niche group. I say niche. I think it's niche. It, like, if I offended someone personally, it makes it makes so much more sense just to message but me. But that's and, why, and vice versa. If, you, if you're posting that stuff on Twitter, you're asking people to answer or to just. Not, well, if, if it's not even requesting a, an answer to it, people uh, yeah, will talk and well, about it. To be it. fair, you're kind of asking for the whole. Um, you know, if yeah, the, that's what social media is. If yeah. the proclaimed autistic girl replied, yeah, saying your piece of shit makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I but I fell into at the same time. It, it makes a lot of sense to you know, hey, message this guy. Be like, I don't appreciate that. Look, I have real social disorders. I can't communicate like you can. That's why I said this. Right. Yeah. That settled, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, when when some rando comes on, screenshots you, posts you to her Twitter, and says yeah. cancel this fool. It's like, well, who are you? Well, see, that's that's what most. I wouldn't even say upsets me. It's just it gets on my nerves. It's like this has nothing to do with you. Mm-hmm. At all, like has nothing to do with you. And but if she had it's a problem- empowering, and it's a good virtue signal. Exactly. To be yeah, like, exactly. fuck this guy. I'm a white knight. Hey, everyone, look at me. I'm defending. Right. You know the mentally challenged. Right. But it wasn't her. It was between you and one person. Yeah. <laughs> and I could easily yeah. pull that card. Like, what do you do for the autistic community? But that I don't want to seek to that level because yeah, it's, it's it's not, not important. Yeah. It's not worth it. It's, it's not worth yeah. pulling because then you with just those it's people. just it. Well, there's no getting through out. to them. Yeah. There's no, no. They don't want to hear it. Even no. if you're objectively reasonable, they don't want to hear anything but an apology. But they'll yeah. still try. It. A lot of well, times, that, that, yeah, that, that's what I'm. A saying lot of times, it's yeah. not enough. Social and, justice has gone so far. Back to that whole click thing you're talking about. You know, a lot of those people. I mean, there's a lot of people. She even says that there's a lot of people that didn't comment on it that w- that laughed at her for saying that e- anyway. And she deleted that tweet, I think, when she said it that I- she has autism. So like, you know, a lot of it's a lot of those people don't want to lose their like cool kid like credentials. Like they want to, they just want to keep quiet about it. And that's fine. Like I completely understand. If that's all you got going for you is a band. I probably wouldn't say shit either. Like if if you have to keep your place, that makes you money or keeps your social status well some people would argue that is it kind of lame some people would argue that being idle is being part of the problem <sighs> yeah yeah they, yeah yeah they would yeah, yeah. The, the best way i can relate this so i saw i saw a tweet uh not too long ago i don't even remember the chick's name so i guess i can't even i can't name drop on accident um so there was a tweet i'm sure you guys saw it um this girl pretty much she got on and she was she was like, oh, is it just me or do does Quinlan like really really fuck it? Quinlan is our hometown. Oh, that was a fun. Time. Yeah, I Quinlan, Quinlan, or does Quinlan really suck? And so what I did what was, I mean, the school. She was yeah, talking, she was. Well, yeah, she's talking yeah, shit does on the Quinlan high, school. On is really, school. Does Quinlan school really suck? And so I got on there and I and like my thing was is I did call her out, but I did it, but I handled it well. So I called her out and I was like, look, Quinlan while it might not be the best school in the world, like you, you can get a full associate's degree by the time you graduate right. high school. I was, I was like, the high school might suck, but it gives you plenty of opportunity. Just the fact, yeah. and for free, for free, by the way, guys, it's free. As long as you're great. They, 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 they pay for your associate's degree and they bust you over there. You don't even have to have your own transportation. Like they, they pay for all this shit out of pocket for you to graduate high school with a two-year degree. So all, you gotta, all you gotta do is make the grades. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so there's plenty of opportunity to do well there you just have to take it upon yourself to do it because if you're just a hall walker and you don't do anything then yeah okay it, it sucks because you're not you're not doing anything to benefit the school right. or yourself but anyway so i got on there and i pretty much said that i was like it's just up to you but i wasn't like i wasn't a bitch to her or, or anything like that and she she commented like hey i'm not trying to start anything i was like no no no, no. I, i'm not i'm not either like i like i'm just giving my, she's like i'm just giving my opinion i was like i am too like i'm not I'm not trying to call you out. Kind of, that was my mentality. Like, those rare, those so were, that brings yeah. up a good point about when I 
I've pointed out when you say something publicly, it makes sense for people to reply publicly. Right, and that but was there's yeah. a right and wrong way to do that. that and, and that was if my you, yeah. if you replied, "Hey, fuck you, bitch, Quinlan's great." <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> that, that was my she's argument. Not, what is she? She's yeah. not willing to listen to yeah. you. Yeah, but you can have a conversation like, "Hey." Here's why this is wrong. Yeah, that, that occurrence is so rare yeah. that I'm glad I saw. Well, that. I yeah. felt I felt bad because when I comment, I didn't think it would gain as much traction as it did. It gained a decent amount. That's the I think that's like the most liked tweet I have, which is sad. I don't have a big Twitter. I don't like Twitter. Uh, but so like it got a lot of traction, and like Michael got in there, and Michael was kind of being um, he was being a little bit pushy he was about being it. Bitter. He was yeah, and. and but he still and, wasn't and, and, talking yeah. shit. No, he, he was wasn't. Just... But he he was being much more direct with it, and I, that wasn't my my intention. Was just like, hey, well, that's not that's, she made her public opinion, so I made my public opinion. I was like, I don't think that's true, but I'm not being a, like I. We can still have this conversation. It's fine. But Michael went in there a little bit more bitter, and she took it as like an attack, which yeah, well, which was per, can... which was reasonable because I I mean I think if I was in her position, I'd be like, is this guy trying to like well, argue with me right now? Like. It's not too hard to convey your tone through text. And so you can tell when someone's asking just gotcha questions to make you look bad. Yeah, so so that that was the thing. Michael was kind of doing that. No offense. Love you, Michael. We're love not you, I'm Michael. not talking I'm not talking shit on I you. I love you to death. Um Suck the skin off. And so but so so anyways <laughs> his ass. His ass. I um so he, he she t- kind of took some of the stuff he was saying as an attack and you could tell she was kind of getting offended and I was and but I was trying to, my best to convey like, hey, I'm not, I'm not trying to do that to you. I just th- this is my opinion about it. I just think your opinion is wrong. So I think I handled it like pretty tactfully. But I feel like if you are going to make a public statement, that does open the door to people like me are able to reply and disagree with you. But I don't think that well, there's a right but, way to go about it. right. And, and I think I, I mean I'm not too my own horn. I think the way I approached it was fine. Exactly. But a lot of people don't want to do that. They see something they disagree with on Twitter or whatever, they immediately get tack. heated so about there, it. So there's two. I'd say there's two and a half reasons for it. One is the keyboard warrior mentality, and no one is immune to it. When you're on no a, when you're behind a keyboard, your ego inflates. I mean, let's be realistic. You can't be touched. Phys- you know, it's like you're you, more willing to do shit behind exactly. text messaging. It's, like, it's like you're willing like, to you're willing to send that like. Risky you know, text or something that you wouldn't say to somebody in person necessarily. Exactly. Like, yeah. So like in a video game, I'll sleep someone on Grand Theft Auto. I wouldn't do that in real life. Yeah. Similar aspect. Okay. Right. So that's rule number one. Number two is hive mind. It, that's yeah. the group think. Right. And, the, and then the half is the tribalism thing. So I would say, ah, oh, fuck. I feel so bad name dropping Michael. But you would empower the, the, um, the opposition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So well, you you came out, you made a solid point, you got good feedback. Well, that would empower anyone that agrees with you. And then, like I said, keyboard warrior mentality enabled. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, I don't know. It, it was in it was interesting. I was just using that as a point to like you can disagree with somebody on social media without just attacking them. Yeah. See, another reason it's funny you said that the whole kind of like ego boosting thing. I as soon as like that shit happened, I realized I gave in to talking shit. And I should have just been quiet. Well, it's like, important. Really it's in, it's important. It's, it's important. It's important over there. It's important <laughs> to swat. It's important. <laughs> to, Toya Howard. It's super important to check your own ego, or else you fi- fall right into hypocrisy. Yep. But you need those times to humble yourself because, hey, man, not everyone's perfect. Well, it's like you need, you need to have those sh- times to be told, hey, shut the fuck up. The way I do it, <laughs> and like I, I very much practice it. And maybe I'll slip up and say something mean to you guys. I know I have a history Fucking of that. Fucking slip up. Well, for the most part, it's like, well, put yourself... <laughs> Toes. Put yourself... <laughs> I, like, have a bunch of, like, hash marks, like, on my chest. Like, like from Black Panther, that dude that has... Right. Yeah, the literally just all over. So, obviously, I'm a pretty mean guy. <laughs> Sawyer, Sawyer says some funny shit like, sometimes. It's like, if you see someone fucking up, you have to think about, can you relate to that fuck up? Have you fucked up? How, right. do you, how would you want to be treated in that situation? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And I can, like I said, I slip up. Sometimes people fuck up. I, I might lose my temper. And, but it's important to, to check the ego. For sure. Yeah. Because just blowing off on someone, it's not going to... No one wants to talk to you when you're being a dick. Right. Straight up. And I learned that like at work. You know, when I worked in maintenance, you know, I could either pull someone aside and educate them or I could pull them aside and belittle them. Yeah. So yep. Very obviously different results and yep. attitudes. Yeah, and it, it's a, it's the same in a debate. Oh man, that brings up a topic. I don't know if we can segue into it if we're done talking Go about ahead. it. What, what topic? Here? Workplace horseshit. <laughs> yeah. I um, got I got plenty. Of oh, that. I got. I, I'm 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 days. going to so so one of one of my things on this podcast. I refuse to talk about work. I'm not going to talk about it. 
because oh your current job yeah, yeah, yeah i'm yeah. not gonna i can't you don't want to hear about it what you don't want to hear about it N- well i can like hear what well, you some guys some people have to say. like they say hey i worked all week i don't want to no, 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 no 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 i mean no, i'm no, talking no. i mean we don't have to talk about i don't i don't give a shit I, I don't give a shit about like that i can come home and talk about work. My, I, I can bitch about work all day but the thing is, is that i'm not i for the sake of keeping my job, I'm not. Gonna, I was just going to talk I'm about avoid most of my bullshit is for my last job. Yeah, I, I have it, so. my bullshit with other people that refuse that refuse to get better. I think I think instead yeah. we should segue to because we're done good about the social media thing so far. Why don't we go ahead and segue into what just recently happened with um, Steven, with Steven Cr- Crowder, Steven okay. Crowder. We, we don't. So I I know who Steven Crowder is. I I, I used to watch his videos uh, a lot when I was younger, especially because I used to be pretty conservative i mean now i'm i would say I'm, I'm fairly i'm in the middle i'm pretty independent but at the time so like I, i'm pretty familiar with steven crowder i'd say every, all three of us are independent for content. yeah we're, we're all, i don't i don't know who this guy is guy. okay so, so harrison whole, doesn't change so, my mind so, i know who that's yeah. him but that's all i know so yeah so we're, we're pretty much as, at least on the political spectrum i'd say we're all like sorry said we're all independents for the most part like we could agree with one side or the other it just depends um so I'm pretty familiar with Steven Crowder and some of the stuff that he's done. He, he's really, he's pretty much become a meme and he's famous for the, cha- that, that's what he's really famous for is the change my mind segments where most people know him from. Um, something just happened and they call it the VOD ad apocalypse. No. Is that not right? Vox. Vox. Yeah, Vox, that's right. Vox. Vox. Not VOD. The fuck? Vox, Vox is the ad news apocalypse. Outlet. So um, I don't know too much about this. Sawyer does and the things that we don't know, we will pull up on the screen and we'll talk about. But now, I want to. Correction. You're saying Vox, not Fox, Vox, right? yeah, Vox. V-O-X. V-O-X, okay. Vox, V-O-X, ad, not the, not the news channel. It. This okay. isn't to disparage them, but Vox is a very blatant left-wing media group. Okay. Just and like you, you would say Fox is a right-wing yeah. media group. Right. I don't right. I don't know much about Vox. I've watched a couple of Vox videos, but I don't, I don't know too much about them. So this whole situation is pretty brand new to me, and it's clearly very... So yeah. he doesn't even know who Steven right. Crowder is. So... Why don't you Why don't you tell us what happened with this, and we'll we'll, we'll so, t- discuss it. All right. Well, if you go, if you spend a lot of time on YouTube like I do, there's a good chance the viewers know what I'm talking about. So you can skip the next two or three minutes. For the randos that are our friend group and extended friends, they probably have no idea, but you've probably seen the hashtag. So um, there's been a YouTube beef for the last I'd say year or two, maybe longer, between Steven Crowder and a certain <coughs> reporter. I'd call him more of a com- columnist, but on YouTube, he's more of an opinion. It's tricky. He he reports, but it's biased reporting. Which a columnist and it's, is. And it's for... Exactly. It's, I'd say a col- columnist is usually someone that writes an opinion piece. Okay. Yeah. And, he, and he works but, for Vox, right? Yeah, but okay. it's, it, you know, it's video format, so I don't know what okay. to call it. Okay, okay, so basically Vox, like I said, uh, blatant left-wing, um, propagandic... Is that a word? Propagandic? We'll use it. Propaganda. It's a word now. Propagandic, bitches. Uh, left wing group. Okay, fuck it. Like, that exists. You can yeah. watch them or not. I'm not going to knock them for that. I don't agree with a lot of it. You know, I'm not super left wing. The, um, the host of this specific segment on the show, is, his name is Carlos Maza. Okay. Um, he is very openly gay and Latino. It's part of his I- identity, apparently. Okay. Right. So, you know, he posts his segments all the time on YouTube, on Vox's YouTube channel. And Steven Crowder built his own, his, you know, his show is called Louder with Crowder. But he built his own segment on uh, debating this guy. Okay. And so, well, where the beef comes in is what Crowder, um, the words he uses to critique this guy. So, Crowder calls himself a comedian. And... And so that segues into the next point where whenever he's talking about this guy, he'll typically call him queer Latino, gay Mexican. You said queer Latino? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, right. And so basically, like, he'll call him out by his race and sexuality okay. in different words. Okay. Okay, so Carlos Maza doesn't like this. He he calls out YouTube and advertisers for supporting harassment. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, so Crowder's rebu- rebuttal is, I'm a comedian. And the guy's openly gay, you know, LGBTQ. So Crowder says, is queer, since it's in LGBTQ, is that really disparaging? I'm right. a comedian. And the guy's Twitter handle, Carlos Maza, the Vox reporter, his Twitter handle is Gay Wonk. G A Y W O N K. Is that a race? The last part? Wonk. I don't know what the fuck Wonk I don't means. know. How do we either. look that up? But anyway, so. Keep telling your story. I'm going um, to. Oh, okay, that? so. Um, the left, the left wing. I'm sorry. The left 
political spectrum is siding with Carlos Maza, obviously, mm-hmm. saying this is harassment. He shouldn't be able to say that. Right. YouTube shouldn't support it. And one thing I want to drop in there because I have an opinion on it is when Carlos Maza said that YouTube is arming right-wing conservative harassment by allowing Crowder on the platform and monetizing. Arming? Uh, yeah, that was said at one that's point. A, that's a, arming. That's a in, harsh word to use. I'm going to get to that because I got strong opinions. <laughs> so Okay. So at first YouTube says he hasn't violated any of our guidelines. He is or isn't, you said? Is not. It's YouTube not. took okay. Crowder's side. Okay, well, then the shirt thing came... Crowder sells a shirt called, it says, Socialism is for Figs. Now, it's F-A, oh. picture of a fig, a little icon, and then G-S. Well, you can tell what it's insane, right? right? Let's be real. But Socialism yeah. is for Figs. It's and so, Carlos Maza is calling him out, calling YouTube out, saying, This guy sells a shirt that says, Socialism is for Fags. He disparages my sexuality and race. This shouldn't be allowed. Okay, well, YouTube comes back and says, all right, we demonetize this guy's channel. Here's why. The shirt and the harassment. And they, you know, YouTube's been really flip-floppy. Like, you can oh, tell. They, they pick and choose. They, they're, YouTube's trying to appeal to the common denominator, in my opinion. And so far, I think the left has had the bigger voice, and so they got their way. That's the gist of it. At the moment, <clears throat> Carlos Maza won. Steven Crowder, right-wing media, zero. Right wing destroyed. Yeah. Right wing tarred. <laughs> anyway. So where my opinion comes in is, one, so um, the conservative, I'm sorry, not even conservatives. I'd say most moderates and right wings are right wingers, and I'm sure some left, leftists, are siding with Crowder because free speech mostly. And the veil of comedian, you know, like, we can't just be censoring people all the time. Okay, so now it's time for my opinion. Crowder's a dick. Um, there's a context to insults, and the veil of a comedian is weak because Crowder's, in my opinion, his comments on the guy are emotionally charged. These guys aren't buds. They don't hang out on the weekend. Right. He wasn't just joking with it. Like, if I said, mm-hmm. Harrison, you're fucking stupid. You're a bitch. Right. Harrison would be like, nah, dude, your mom. These guys aren't friends, though. It's very vague. from Because I've seen some of the right, videos, and right. a lot of that is vague. So when, yeah. when Crowder's like, oh, yeah, lispy queer over here says this. Jesus. It's like, uh, all right, yeah, oh, maybe you're God. a comedian, Crowder. You can just tell when someone maybe, is trying to hurt someone's Maybe feelings, queer you know? has become a normalized yeah. word, but, like, so like so is bitch. Like, that's a female dog, right? Her, her, but, you, like, you're using it derogatory, man. You, right. you're, you're making fun of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so... In my opinion, YouTube's not obligated to support anyone they don't want. They're a company. They're a private organization. Crowder deserved his demonetization. He was a dick. I don't think he should be deplatformed. Like I said, free speech. That hasn't happened yet, though, right? Not it's yet. just but, demonetization. But it happened to Alex Jones, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the big point. Right. It's like yeah. Crowder's next, right? Probably. That's what, they're, that's what the narrative's like yeah. leaning towards. Okay. Okay, can we... Hold on on the conversation. Uh, my computer's kind of going slow, so I want to say what we have so far okay. so, so we don't lose shit. So this is just going to be a slight little break in the uh, in the whatever. I can probably just stitch that together. Not too bad. All right. So where I was going with that, Crowder sucks. But Maz is a pussy, too. Because when he, when he cries that YouTube is arming conservatives while using the same platform that if I know is monetized, and Vox is backed by multi-billion, maybe? Dollar companies, what is it, MSNBC, has a lot of money invested in them. Oh, they're, shit, they're, he has a certified paycheck, and I'm, if I, I'm quite positive they're monetized on most of their videos. So to say that YouTube is arming conservatives and you know harassers and First of all, homophobes and xenophobes, it's like, well, hold on, dog. You got the same exact platform and tools. Yeah. So is YouTube also arming the LGBTQ community? Uh-huh. Okay, so his cry is, "Oh, you need to protect us. You know, we we're not safe on this until you get until you deplatform people like Crowder." But it's like, what about you're armed also, yeah, dude? Right. Okay, so like I said, Crowder, this is where I leave it at, and then I'll stop talking so you guys can chime in. Crowder deserved demonetization. He's a dick. You can't be disparaging people, calling him lispy, queer, gay, Latino bullshit. Sure. You guys aren't friends. That's not right. You know. Right. Okay. Maza's a coward calling for deplatforming because YouTube's arming conservatives when he has the same exact tools, arguably the same or more reach. That's just like okay, yeah. Sorry. And he's backed by a legit multi million dollar 
investor-backed organization. Uh-huh. Like, how do you... Who Who's less armed? Who's more armed in this situation? It's it's two different political views, but... Well, no, it's... It's fair. He's because bullshitting. It's, he's, twisting, yeah. he's twisting it to support his own side of bullshit. Yeah. Like I said, right. Crowder's a dick. I agree. Fuck him. I, yeah. I agree with a lot of Crowder's sentiments. You know, I'm not like... I don't want to get too into it, but you know, I lean, cons- I lean left. I'm sorry, I lean to the right a lot when it comes to social issues. I lean to the left a lot when it comes to policy. Hmm. Okay. And so, I agree. You know, you can't be famous for being a conservative um, influencer without covering social issues almost exclusively. Yeah. And so, like I said, I agree with Crowder a lot. I just think he's a dick. I think his change my mind segment is meant to show. It's meant for him to win arguments. You know, it's it's not change my mind. It's let me change your mind. Oh, yeah. It, that's what it... Oh, I thought it no, was... No, 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 no. That, that's what it is. I'm saying He's, that's what it actually oh, is. Oh, that's what it really means. Well, yes. Okay. Even though, he, even Crowder, though he, he claims to have pretty... And I've seen some where, like, they're having pretty civil discussions, but for the most part, he's not really willing to budge on his well, point he, of view. He's been backed into a corner by one kid. His name was Yusuf. Yeah. The only problem is Yusuf took the Crowder route, and he used the word autistic... And Uh-oh. called Crowder a shill. Uh oh. And so Crowder, he went full hypocrisy mode and been like, "Oh, you're a dick. You you're making fun of autistic." He got people. really. He got he got pretty. So he kicked by the it. kid off basically. But it's like, hold on, Crowder, you just you dodged all his points because he said something mean. Well, also Crowder does that. But that's Crowder's brand. Yeah, he's that Crowder com- does that. To right, a lot he's of a comedian. I I agree with you completely. I think that using the term "I'm a comedian," I think that's bullshit. Because mm-hmm. not a, Crowder is a comedian. I will give him that. No, he's ha- not. Well, hang on, hang on. He is a comedian. He is also a political and social commentator. I say he's not a comedian. He's. I think. I think he's a mix of both because he does. He does whole skits and segments of him trying to be funny. And he, like, have you ever seen him? Dre- okay. He dresses up as like Bernie Sanders. Then and you're shit right. Like that. I'll backtrack. When what? he made fun of Eminem's cipher on Donald Trump, that's 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 what I'm saying. He that he, was he does he does that shit too. So I say he is part comedian. I will I will agree with him on that. However, the main thing that he does and the thing that he's known for is political and social comedy. And that's not comedy. I'm sorry. I agree. No, and, but- and, and you you'll watch him. He'll get very uh, passionate and emotional about the things that he says. And while he might throw in some jabs or jokes here and there, for the most part, what he's saying is very, this is my opinion. This is very direct. This is what I think is right or wrong. So I, I don't agree with the fact that just because he's a comedian, that gives him full reign to just. Well, my argument is that it's not comedy when he does. It. Okay, let's say Dave Chappelle goes on stage and he's making someone being a douche, making fun of someone being a douche. This, he's like, this is where I agree with And you. he's like, yes. yeah, let's be, let's, let's be queer over here. Said this, audience laughs. It's pretty safe to assume that, you know, a stand-up comedian, he writes jokes probably for shock factor, yeah. you know, just to get a reaction. Right. Crowder's talking about legit social issues, debating someone that he obviously doesn't like. You know, it's not comedy when he de- when he debates Vox. It's Well, I also wouldn't call his his change my mind segments comedy. He 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 has some funny edits in there sometimes. But for the most part, when he when he's talking to these people, I mean, he's very he's very serious. I think he's full of shit. Yeah, I don't think I, I, think, I think the I guys think comedy of, is a veil for him. I I would I would agree with that because I, people will back comedians, and you know Joe Rogan talks about it a lot. It's like comedy for one context matters for comedy. Comedy, no one is safe from comedy. It none of it is serious. Yeah, no, or that's how it should be. Unless you're like George that, yeah. Carlin, no one really believes the most of the bullshit. It's just yeah. like it's shock it's shock value. Just to get a, a right, you know, a reaction out of people. Yeah. Like we laugh when we hear grotesque, fucked up shit, because it's like, did he just say that? Right. Right. Yeah. When 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 Crowder says it, he's talking about someone he genuinely doesn't like. <laughs> yeah. And he might he might argue that, but I think he's full of shit. Yeah. I I would I would agree with that. I I mean I'm a, I'm a huge free speech advocate. Mm-hmm. I mean the fact that we're even doing this. I, I think, think he I should think... be allowed on the platform. No, no, no yeah, yeah, and that's the don't thing. watch him if you want to if you hate him. The, the best way to go after someone is with your wallet, especially like a, a social figure, because their wallet depends on an audience. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? Um, that, that's something else that because like I know I know Crowder he doesn't I would say he doesn't make most of his money from YouTube. Would Be- you like some pair? Yeah, I'll take some pair. 
Um, he, I don't think he makes most of his money from YouTube because I mean he's more. got he's not well yeah. it's, it's very hard for right well he's been getting monetized. he's been getting demonetized for a while I think that's all I because I mean I remember a couple years ago watching videos where I mean he I mean he's been complaining about this rightfully so he's been complaining about getting demonetized for a while like like I said you, okay you I'll admit YouTube has a bias. Well, yeah, but at the same yeah. time, they're a private company. Well, Joe Rogan they're, gets demonetized all the time, yeah, and he and, and he's not conservative opinion, at all. In my opinion, and this, you might call me a liberal, but I think it's a very conservative view. They have the right to have a bias. They're a private company. I agree. Uh, and you, so, you, you if, did, yeah. if they want to choose who they put ads in front of, they're a company. Their service is free. I completely agree with that. My 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 thing about YouTube has always been. They have every right to do this, and I support their right to I do it. I think a lot of people forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, they do, because yeah. they, they think YouTube is just like this, like, free public. It, well, it, it is for YouTube, the public. Because that's the thing, because back in the day when I, like, me and you were in fourth grade, like, watching YouTube videos, like... No there, holds bars, dude. Yeah. Like, dude, there was, like, there's... Yeah. there People weren't making serious money off of YouTube yet. I don't I even think, think YouTube... Well, ads they weren't even a thing in 2007. Yeah, no. Google Incorporated to cash right. in... But right. then to influence people to join the platform and to take it seriously, they said, hey, you can get a cut of this yeah. advertisement money. Right. And, and so, yeah. But now people feel that they're entitled to it just yeah. because they've used it. Oh, I depend on this. This is my income. No, you don't. But like your yeah. employer doesn't have to keep you hired if they don't like. Right. It's become. And see, that's my thing about YouTube. I, I love YouTube. It, it sucks that some of these videos get demonetized or deplatformed for certain platforms that they have. Well, that's another. Well, yeah. So where, where I'm going with that is that. It sucks that that happens, but you're right. They're a private company, and they have every right to do it. The, the The main thing that sucks about it, though, is that because it has the political views that they have, or the bias that it that they appear. Well, and to have, their CEO is openly against yeah. like right wing. Yeah. So shit. so because of that, well, they're also they pretty much have. Um, it, I'm going to use monopoly in quotes here because I mean it's not really a monopoly, but on as far as um, just like video content social video social content. video content they have a monopoly on now now other platforms have emerged and i was actually talking to uh, facebook has made a very solid yeah i, I was talking i was talking about this at uh, at work the other day with one of my coworkers. we actually had a pretty good conversation about it but um some other platforms have emerged that you like 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 twitch has become a pretty big thing for gamers like it's huge now um but as far as just social commentary or just cool funny videos you can put up somewhere well, no videos yeah it, it, videos in general just regular videos nothing compares the only well, and that goes into branding no one says yeah i'm shooting this for a facebook video yeah i'm shooting this for a venmo or, Vi or i'm vimeo. not venmo vimeo, Vi vimeo is like the only competitor they could possibly have well, and that, it's a, it's vimeo, a joke. vimeo isn't a joke because the thing is they appeal to film filmmakers with their um lack of compression okay you see that i didn't know it's, that it's a technical aspect i didn't know that and okay. i think you have to pay for it too because those okay. servers obviously need to support anyway, All right, so maybe maybe they have more to them than i it's, than I it's a branding thing too youtube has a a brand that's integrated in our vocabulary. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not making a Facebook video. I'm not just shooting a video. I'm shooting a YouTube video. Yeah. You know no, what no, I'm that's what I'm saying. Like, they, they hold, they have the control. So that's where it sucks. However, it's their complete right. They it were the ones right. that had yeah. the idea in the yeah. first place. They're the ones who took over it because they had the foresight to see, like, hey, this is something big. So, it, yeah, okay, yeah, it sucks for people. Sorry that some of your shit's getting done, but I mean, they have every right to do it. And um, the thing I was talking about is that I think, um, like say like like Twitch because Twitch is pretty much just live streaming for games, right? For the most part, or a lot of people do commentary. Any live streaming, but it's yeah. dominated by gamers. Yeah. Right. So Started it's mainly off. live streaming. So like I was yeah. saying, because because now I mean YouTube has clearly become a Sorry. little bit. I mean, <laughs> YouTube has kind of been ingrained in the political climate now. Yeah. I was saying that if a company like Twitch was to have now like start like their own side, something's like, hey, like not only can you do live streaming, like this is a fucking video platform now. If a company as big as Twitch did something like that, I think it would start to do well, at least at least from can, now. Because I, I want to add, I want to add a layer to this. Well, well hang on. Um, so I think there has been no other point in history since YouTube has emerged that another platform has become viable. I Hard think to compete. I think now yeah, that people are kind of getting agi that people are getting agitated with getting demonetized, getting deplatformed, or the fear that they might be because of their views. I think now more than ever there's a chance that another platform could arise. Well, you're right. And but the, and I, I want to get Harrison's opinion before I add a layer to this. Okay. But I also want to add something else. And that... um, By the way, I apologize. I'm not talking too much because this is kind of new. YouTube... Oh, you're fine, man. It's a company. It's, it has to be profitable. And so in order to do that, 
you have to appeal to the lowest common denominator, mm-hmm. the the biggest group of people. And so it does become political because arguably, but in my opinion, left wing has the biggest voice. For sure. And that goes into a big, broader spectrum. You know? We well, also got to right, think it's about... It's a big country. Millennials are starting to grow up. Millennials are way more integrated with technology, so they're more integrated that's, with YouTube. That's what I was going to say. Because so they're more, yeah. Likely, yeah. they're more yeah. likely to, to come at YouTube. So YouTube... Absolutely. They're gonna pick. They gotta pick a side, otherwise, you know, people will boycott them, and they yeah. just can't have that. And they're gonna, like I said, um, the newer, newer generation, millennials, Gen Z. I'm, yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's probably like eighty percent of their audience, and that's totally anecdotal. But let's be real. So yeah. if that if that age group from the last thirty years is mostly um, left wing or liberal. Or le- even left leaning, obviously YouTube's gonna take their side, and that. Yeah. So that's my explanation for that. I want to hear your opinion on it all before I add one. Yeah, more. based, I, based I on what you heard so far, what I mean, what do you? I mean, what what uh, kind of what you were gonna say? I mean, you know, you have to think about who uses YouTube more, and it's the younger generations who, and the younger generations <laughs> gravitate a lot more towards left wingish. I think. I mean, th- th- to be fair, there's a lot of. I mean, I worked with a lot of them. Like, there's a lot of more right wing people that I mean it's more the Bible Belt it depends on where you grow up kind of shit I think I think Mark sent us an article that like the people of our age are like insanely more left leaning than oh, 100%. ever before there's 100%, per, yeah. per like in like in a group of four people there's probably more three there's at least one person besides like you're the minority most of the time in the group of people yeah. if you're like more right wing I think anyway, anyways what you were but uh, I mean I don't have much to say about it I mean I think like kind of going back to what I said you know people forget you know Look, think about how YouTube used to be, like when you were growing up. Like YouTube, you go yeah. for funny videos, and that was it. But then once people started realizing you could get paid for, or people were funny enough, and they're like, "Oh, we can make, we can profit off this," and they started profiting off it. And like you said, it's in a company that can do whatever they they can do whatever they want with it because they can. Like, yeah, they, I mean, they've blown up so big that people were like, "Oh, we think like." You can say whatever you want. I mean, but they, the can, thing, they can take YouTube away, and that's what well within their exactly, rights. Exactly. Absolutely. And I, I think that's... And, you know, the whole thing about... I was going to say about Alex Jones. As crazy as that motherfucker is, it's pretty crazy to platform him. Like, you know... Well, like that's that... Okay, now I have two layers to add. Okay. But since yeah. we're on that subject, is social media considered a right? No. And I agree with that. No. But people would say it's arguable, and this could... Very well, one day be a Supreme Inter- Court case. Internet's not even your right. This could very well be a su- Supreme Court case that you know, in the age we live in, yeah. social media is very, very well integrated into our lives. Yeah. And so to deplatform someone, could that be considered suppressing free speech? I usually argue no. I say no because no company has a right to support you. You still have the freedom to go out into your freaking front yard and hold out a we'll picket see, sign. That brings up another point: is that but, like, I think now Alex Jones, he's been around for a while. He's been doing this crazy shit even before social media. So I'm well, sure that's he, the thing. It's the the main point is the age we live in, right? And that's my point: is where that social I, media is it, it matters. I mean, it does for it, sure. But like, I think if you look think, into the Trump Russia scandal, like social media swayed the election. Sure. I but I definitely think people forget what did we do before that, like. It's well, not, no one has reach like they do now. Well, sure, that's 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 fair. Well, I'm the newspapers may have, but like that's been left. It's more reach now. It's that's been a, that's fair. Behind. I'm not saying one's better than the other. I mean, I, if you had to choose between getting your voice out there by news, like for TV versus social media, I mean, I, even I, I don't even have cable. Like I straight up use the internet. My mm-hmm. the internet is my of entire course. everything. Like. Just because that's what I use. So if you so. kick someone off, so we agree. You said that YouTube has a monopoly on social video, basically. I yeah right. I, I say okay, they definitely so do. and you just said the internet is like that's all your media consumption. Yeah. So to kick someone off of YouTube who has a monopoly on that um, area of the internet is that censorship? Yeah, because so the problem is, yeah. Yeah. but it gets tricky because well, a private company owns that website. You yeah. still have the freedom well, right, to yeah, create that, your that, own website. That, yeah, that's exactly where I was going to go with that. And because so I'm, I'm a little on the fence. I'm I lean towards no company is obligated to support you, yep. but it, they do make a good point that if YouTube has a monopoly on video content, um, maybe Facebook has monopoly. 
there's a few websites that compete, like you know, Reddit and Facebook and yeah. Twitter probably all have the same competition. Yeah. YouTube has a specific monopoly. I would say my main rebuttal to that is the point that you were just about to make was the fact that you can have your own because I agree more with with YouTube side on the fact that they can support whoever the fuck they want because that that well the the point of government intervention and monopoly is when someone has monopoly they right. can suppress others right and so if you can't get on YouTube no one's gonna watch you let's be real that's what well, yeah that, that's where I was going with that so there, there's well and now I can't quite remember uh but yeah so you you can you can go out and you can start your own whatever like I think for instance Glenn Beck. Um, he had some kind of issue with Fox or, or something like that. So he completely started his own network. Like he's like, he has his own, I think it's called the blaze or something. It's like his own TV network and you can stream it, whatnot. And the motherfucker says whatever the hell he wants. Like that's his own deal. He doesn't give a shit if YouTube has him or not or whatever. He just has his own network and that's what he talks about. So you can still do it. However, like you were saying, because of the fact that they are a borderline monopoly on video publishing, it, you have to have either some kind of following before or uh, some kind of social traction for Do people you, to watch sorry. you. Did you did you ever follow that thing where people were trying to go to YouTube about making reaction videos a th- like a... So the fine, remember the the fine bros tried to trademark yeah. um, reaction videos yeah. at one point. That was, mm-hmm. the cra- that was the craziest shit I think I've ever heard. I was that, like... That was- I'm not that, saying take it seriously. That turned but, out to be just be horse shit. Like that. That oh, wasn't true at all. No, it was. I mean, you had to watch the video and come up to come, make your own conclusion. But like that's that's not gonna happen. No, no, I'm not saying it would. But I just remember like that being brought up, and I was like, <laughs> I just thought it was goofy. That's like, bullshit. yeah. Well, um, I, I think so, some. Of, I think some of that shit is kind of interesting in general because like I, the the dude from. Um, Fresh Prince Carlton, the guy that played Carlton. Oh, he sued. Uh, he, he was sued for now because he had a he had like a uh, like a trademark oh, pending. He's not the only one trying to sue. Yeah, Fortnite. yeah, there's oh, tons yeah. of people, but okay. I think that, that the the flossing kid. I yeah. think. So he the flossing kid has no part in the lawsuit against Fortnite. I watched an interview and he's just like, yeah, my mom and her lawyer, my mom and my lawyer are doing it. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Yeah, you, you see, I think I think that's really interesting. It's like you can trademark a dance. Shit, I would too if my kid like, came out fucking doing I think that crazy makes sense. dances. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Well, no, no, no yeah, no. I, I'm not. I'm not saying. Any art. I'm not saying that doesn't make sense. I think it's kind of crazy. Like, it's like holy shit. Like you can like just if you move a certain weight suit. Like I think I think that's funny. I think it depends. I mean, if yeah. I just you know fucking I can't trademark that, but if I have like a solid. You, you put know, a name to it, trademark. Eight, it. If I like an you eight can bar dance, you want now, Sawyer. Fucking let's. I think you, if you your whip a, thing, let's let's like put a spin on that, and now you now it's yours. I think it makes sense. Like the Carlton yeah. dance is pretty iconic. No, it is. But I just thought I just thought it's in petty. general it's funny it's that a, you yeah. can you can now literally sue someone for the way you dance. Like I think that's hilarious. It's oh, a yeah. petty ass lawsuit. One hundred percent. I want to backtrack to the layer I wanted to add to the YouTube censorship. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, people, let, let's go. Let's go a little further into this, and let's jump into. I was going to say we've stuff. been on this topic. All right, we'll do a quick opinion piece. Okay. okay. A lot of people are arguing that it's just one thing. So it's a lot of people say mainstream media is coming after YouTubers because independents are stealing their audience. Do you know who Philip DeFranco is? That no. sounds familiar. No. Okay, he's a very popular independent. He doesn't call himself a journalist, but he's a journalist. He has his own like news channel where he covers three to five subjects every segment millions of followers the the idea is that um mainstream media doesn't like that he's taking away their viewers their readers okay and so what happened what ended up happening is in the midst of the crowder stuff cnet i'm sorry yeah cnet put out a hit article hit article on gamers because they're angry in some of their videos and a lot of them got demonetized jesus christ did you see that the World Health Organization just claimed that video game addiction is a mental health? Oh my god. M- right. Mental health issue? It makes sense. Addiction. Well, it's only it's only the World Health Organization. There have been several people um, in like the mental health um, I think in like the psychiatry community of the world who have come out and been like, "Hey, you really need to rethink your opinion because we don't think this is okay, right." Okay, fine. Fine. I mean, I'm not a scientist, but you can be addicted to. Fucking no, no, no. I, I, I didn't mean to. Sep- you, I didn't mean to sidebar. And I was just saying. Hey, did get, you know that? Model? If you get a freaking dopamine rush from Red Dead Redemption Two, of course it can be. Oh ridiculous. well, yeah. No, I, I've seen people who they have let video games become their like they much prefer to be in the realm of video game world as opposed to being in real life. So I agree with that, but I, I didn't mean for that to a be a A lot of people sidebar. would argue that like, yeah. Well, now we're gonna go into addiction. <laughs> 
because that was a good segue. I'm interested in this. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, okay, let's say... What specifically about addiction? People okay, argue that we... Pour me some more wine, bitch. Oh, dude, I'm out. You're out of pair? I can get, I can open a new bottle. Dude, of I got you. Hold up. I can open a new bottle of pear. Let me get to this, though. Okay. Uh, oh, dude, thanks, Down man. That. There's some vape into a glass. What if you're not shit. addicted to the substance? <laughs> what if you're not addicted Frothy. to the substance, but you're addicted to... It's a good to, year. But you're addicted to the routine of it. That could be. What about that? Well, what, well, what if? What, what is the? Let's say. What's the punchline here? Okay. Well, we're gonna use weed to be dramatic. Okay. I wake up every day and I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna start waking and baking. Okay. So I, I smoke weed every morning. Well, six months down the line, I was late for work. I didn't have time to hit my bowl. And I'm just like, fuck, dude. I feel so off. I'd have hit my bowl this morning or something stupid. I get you know where you're saying? going. That's a fair like, point. Like, okay. Yeah. Weed, weed can be addictive straight up but like what if you're just addicted I can use the same thing with I, I didn't eat my freaking cereal this morning I, I didn't have feel, my coffee this morning I just feel it's funny you say I just feel off so you can be addicted to like a routine I agree that's no, no that's 100% true because you know I don't know if y'all remember but my fiance's stepdad does that for a living he works I'm not gonna plug it but like he works as he has a, a dispensary no 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 he works as He's getting more of the wine. Oh, okay. He works as a, uh, and he, he's the president of an addiction or recovery. I don't know what the right word to say with it. I got off the track. Anyway, he he helps with. He's the president of a company that deals. It's like almost like a halfway house. So like rehabilitation. That's the word I'm looking for. Okay. Rehabilitation place, and he talks about that a lot because he himself went through addiction as well, and he yeah. says a lot of you know, half the battle is kind of getting setting yourself with a new routine and i yeah. completely think that's true like i think like source said you can be addicted to anything it doesn't matter Thanks. i mean it won't I mean it's I, that's just my opinion but like the routine part is definitely true because yeah. i think once you realize you just got to figure a different way to do things now i'm saying that's easy but like yeah. i that, i completely agree with that though I no can't really i much i, I that, think but. i think the idea of being addicted to video games i 100 percent think you can i've seen people some of our friends be super addicted to video games. Yep. Whether, whether they admit it or not, it's a thing. And people will literally prefer vi video game reality. Well, we got to do the preface that we're not scientists. If well, people are debating, no. if scientists are debating that WHO, it's all anecdotal. I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think it's a, it's an interesting debate, and I think it has merit to it. I think if if there's enough out there that you know, uh, World Health Organization, um is willing to go to such a bold claim to say that this is a thing, I think there's definitely merit. There's merit, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But there's there's I think merit. we just need to preface yeah. everything we say is anecdotal. Every Okay, hey, guys, if you're listening right now, if you're still fucking here, which you might have tuned out when we paused, I don't know, fucking, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We act like we do. Like, we have these opinions and shit. Like, we think we're smart. We might be dumb as fuck. Like, it, let us know. I mean, don't let us know. We don't care. I mean, po post in the comments. Make that make that shit all cancer I'm like it is on every shit, other. I wasn't trying to get super serious. No, but. well, yeah, but no, but I mean, we don't know what the fuck we're talking. I'm no, we're, we're, we're just shit. a bunch of dudes sitting around bullshitting like you guys would on a Friday night with your friends. Like we I don't. I would say you saw the. You may have experienced a seeing addiction, so you saw yeah. the signs that someone's addicted to video games. Right. It's just my own personal. And you have night. been able to draw the conclusion that, like, dude, you are you seem like you're addicted to video games. Yes, we're not doctors. We uh, we act like we know what we're talking about. We might not. Uh, who the fuck? I know, I know some stuff. Who the fuck cares? We're just talking, man. We're just talking. This is a conversation. You're here. To, you're here. To listen, to, you're here listening to our conversation. I'm, I wasn't I'm not, trying I'm to get not, that. I'm not getting serious. I'm not getting serious. Fuck I'm up. fucking. Fuck I'm about? being sarcastic. Um, fucking hate it. Anyways, canceled. we also we also love video games. So I just got canceled. Damn, bro. Oh shit. Go ahead. I'm it's sorry. a hard world. I I, I mean that was just the point I was making is that we're not we're just having conversations and also we love video games. So. Oh, that this will be a great segue into modern warfare. Oh yes, go on. So well, <laughs> I gotta get some shit in about that. Game. <laughs> All right, guys, we're talking about modern warfare. Let's go. No, I want to hear what you had to yes, say. Yes, that was no, that was pretty. That was it. I didn't have. Yo, well, how do you feel? Okay, so you remember the uh, airport scene in modern warfare three, three, two, two. two? It's remember at the, the very beginning of Modern Remember Warfare. Remember the airport scene, the terrorist scene? The new game <clears throat> reportedly makes that scene look like a Pixar well, film. Well, okay. So it's it's kind of 
up in the air, but what game... For those of you who yeah. did not play Modern Warfare 2 and know what we're talking about, there no is a, there is a is scene... Right? Yeah, that's the mission. There's a scene at the very beginning of the game, like when you first start playing. Pretty early. You don't even know who you are, like the character that you're playing, but you're walking through this airport and your your job, your mission in in the mission of the game is you have a machine gun and you are oh. mowing down every single person in the airport. Your Murky objective civilians. is to kill every fucking person in the airport. Pretty tough. It is... It is Right out of the gate, I didn't know. Holy at the time, fuck! At the time, I didn't know what was going on. So I was just like, shooting people like ignorantly. So what I was gonna say, because whenever that got brought up in the group chat, I went to go look because I thought I straight up thought this new Modern Warfare was a remaster. It's a yeah, it's a reboot. Kind it's of. It's a sequel. It's a sequel. Yeah, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So but, it is, but yeah. I also read that it's like a. It's also yeah, like they a are reboot. Reboot. Well, I thought it was a remaster of the first one, but I yeah, guess it's because I, they I, suck at branding. They're sure. going. They're doing nostalgia porn again. Hurt dirt. Another modern warfare. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. Well, we so right. what I went, what he looked into, and then I looked kind of a little bit deeper into it. So because there's not much news. I think we read most of the it. same articles. Cause, I didn't read anything about this. I think I think more is going to come out about it this Sunday because E3 is happening. Uh-huh. But uh, what's happening is so there are a lot of game testers that played this and apparently the context of it is they're that the brand going to make this modern warfare game they're trying to make it the most realistic call of duty there's been Mm -hmm. and so with this in mind apparently uh, i don't know the context of how true this is but apparently the creators went and looked at a lot of like war crime videos like isis videos and not to say i'm not saying they're making isis they just use that example like that they went and did some research. They're trying and to. They're trying to bring not just the, action, the atrocities of war. Exact, the horrors of war, not just the like. It's not oh kill streak like tactical nuke. Like they're like right. bringing out the real. I mean, because the campaign was pretty realistic in Modern Warfare too. But what they're they're trying to go pretty balls to the wall with this. Like they're taking away friendly fire. I'm sorry, they're taking away where you can't shoot because in Modern well, Warfare no, two they're changing the system where you well you, you get a grading system. You don't fail yeah. the mission for killing a civilian. You get a grading system though. You don't fail the mission. Yeah. You just get reactions mm, from okay. your teammates. You'll, you'll hear like apparently like what the fuck or something like that. Yeah. Like something crazy. But, but you, you don't, don't fail. You don't fail. Yeah. So you deal with the real situations and apparently. What I've heard from multiple people is that there's a situation you run into with a child or like a infant and a mother. Mm. And a lot of this comes in. I, there's no context, though. That's all we know so okay. far. Well, there, and so the context of it is, is that people are like, can you shoot the baby? I'm like, what? <laughs> Where's that come from? But well, apparently yeah. the situation comes in where it's it's there. People are saying it's either a hostage situation mm. or there's a which that's been dealt with in Call of Duty many, many times. But I think it's not hostage. I think it has to do with it's in the middle of like a war. It seems more like someone and caught in a crossfire. Exactly. I think that, that's what I was meaning to say. So what I read. with this in mind, I think I I don't know. It's weird because like I think is, is it important if you can shoot him? No. Can I the, talk about what was reported real quick? About yeah. Basically, really when it comes down to it, you find out. I might be mistaken, but there's a woman and a child in another room mm-hmm. along with a an ally. Okay. Enemies come into that room, shit goes down. Oh, you know more than And I what do. the reporter okay. said was, you shoot through the wall to take out this enemy. Uh-oh. Mm. Okay. But there's a child and an infant in that room. And you don't know. I could be wrong. This is what I remember reading. And so there's a very good chance you you kill that child and mother. Okay. And so what the deal was, a lot of the game testers, and I don't know if it was from this scene or from other scenes, but people were like it. crying. Yeah. Really? People yes. were like hurt by this game. Well, if their if their job is to ca- if their if their goal is to capture the atrocities right. of war, that then I guess they're succeeding. Well, let's get into it. Yeah. Why are they doing that? Is it to sell games off of shock factor? Okay. Or is it to report and sympathize with the atrocities of war. Okay, let's be real. Maybe maybe they become self-aware, and they're like, we have made this whole idea of, and I'm not, I don't actually believe this, but uh, this whole idea of, uh, you know, warfare gaming, we kind of glorify it, and we glorify going to war, That's and blah, a fair blah, blah. Point. But so, so we're making this game to show you that, hey, like, while we might have accidentally done this, this is what it's really like. Do you think that's the case? Well, I think there's a chance. Let's say uh, they put out a game that's just so vulgar, realistically atrocious. Mm -hmm. Do you think Activision is trying to make a critique on the global military sentiment? 
or do you think they're trying to sell games I think, from free I think press? It, based off of my very limited knowledge that I have at the current moment, I think it would be a mixture of both. Because Activision, at least in the grand, in, the, in their past couple games, have not been doing too well. I mean, Call of Duty always sells because it's Call of Duty. It's it's a huge brand. But but the games that Activision has made specifically, they're the ones that typically make the modern the Modern Warfare games. After Modern Warfare three, they went like that with their fucking. I mean, yeah. just straight stock market nineteen twenty nine with their fucking shit. Like Infinite Warfare is the most disliked game uh, video on YouTube like of all time. Oh yeah, uh, they recycled uh, animations. Yeah, so they haven't been doing good. So I think they realized, hey, in order to get our sales back up and to get us back to our former glory, we're gonna have to do something badass. So I think, and but also they never make these games. Is it w- badass when you when you go into making a whole game? I don't think you go into it without when you're thinking of the narrative, trying to come out with some kind of. Uh, either moral conclusion or what is this game is what is this game about because you have teams of writers like what is it that well, this game is about another thing moral conclusion could you could argue that's virtue signaling you could but what i'm saying is is that i don't think i don't think any game no matter what as, even as bad as the game is that they don't go in there like okay what is the grand scheme of this narrative so i think that yes they could be making a critique of this is it's like hey this is a, uh, a critique of the atrocities of war but also hey our sales have been declining lately for sure. We haven't been and doing that's what I want to. There's there's another kind of layer I want to add to because I've been 13 before, and there's the oh what if we put this in the game that'd be so fucked up, yeah yeah and that would that gets attention. I think it. I think it's both. It I think for sure it's both because so. I think well like that because we're having the we're, we're, the fact that we're having this conversation right now is like oh shit can you can you really do that. We're gonna one that's of us free press to our four st- viewers. Statistically speaking, one of us in this room right now is going to play the game. Just I'm gonna to buy see. the game because of crossplay. What, what, what? We can play together from console to PC. Really? Oh shit. Yep. Okay. PS4, I didn't know that. However, Xbox most too. likely consoles. If that's okay, let's say <laughs> we're totally sidetracking. Let's say. So how it is? is Do we can gonna, kill an infant together. How it is is the game right now. <laughs> shit. <laughs> right now the just game did bleep out everything you said. Oh my god. Just, <laughs> <laughs> no, leave that in. How it is, the yeah. game detects input. Okay. They're going to pair PC players with controller with PC players, controller players with controller players. Okay. However, and this is slightly anecdotal, if you join my party, they're most likely you're going to be playing PC players if I'm on PC. Okay. Is there an issue with that or what? Um, It's quite... Modders or is that no, the issue? No, 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 no. The, arg- the issue is that... PC has an advantage based on ergonomics and input lag. A lot of things. A lot of things. Okay, so and I'm going to get into technical aspects. Typically, a, uh, a TV isn't very high refresh rate. Most content you watch on a TV is 24 or 30 frames per second. PC monitors, they're meant to accommodate the highest frame rate. Gaming monitors, so you'll see about 120 hertz to accommodate 120 frames per second. So you see more things Bad. faster, and maybe it's not noticeable to a casual gamer. Sorry, yes. um, each each podcast I'm going to do a random okay. snap, either Instagram input or input lag. Input What's lag. Up, guys? PlayStation and I think Xbox use Bluetooth, and TVs also. They don't have the best input lag because you know. Um, well, I mean, it's think not about, about reaction time on a well, living room TV. Me- remember when you plug in your computer to your TV, mm-hmm. how it reacts? It's I can I can understand where you come from from that. So, well, I mean, so TVs aren't meant to accommodate to an extent like reaction time. Oh yeah. no, this is shitty. I would never. Well, it's not terrible, but like I see what he means because like coming from a person that doesn't know like the technical. Right. Okay. About so it, like, you I have a it, yeah. let's say you have a hundred twenty hertz monitor, which can accommodate a hundred twenty frames per second. Okay. You have um, a wired gaming controller and mouse, which has like a. Like that. I don't have. Yeah. Um, I haven't looked into input lag on peripherals yet. Let's say a, a 0.5 millisecond response time. Your monitor is a 0.2, maybe less than 0.2 millisecond response time. So everything is like instant, mm-hmm. right? Also, and, consoles are going to get murdered. And you're on. most likely yeah. on the Ethernet. Okay. Because PC gamers take shit seriously, typically. So you have lower ping, fuck? which means you have a faster connection to the server. Okay, now let's look at console gamers. 
Are we all getting on our phones now? No, no I I, my, 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 phone. my shit failed to send. I like it. I'm sitting in my okay. living room. Let's with my say Wi-Fi. we're on a console. Tip the current gen consoles. I think they max out 30 FPS. Mm. So you have less frames. Okay, uh, a TV 60 hertz. I'd say is pretty normal because, like I said, um, movies and TV shows they don't exceed 30 frames per second. You know that. Okay, and then you have a blue. You have a wireless controller. And I'll tell you myself, going from a controller to a, a mouse and keyboard, even wireless, both of them being wireless, world of difference. No, yeah, definitely. Super different. Okay. Every time, every time I play like any kind of shooter. Okay, on my so computer, you can already no... see the insane differences in PC gaming versus console gaming. There's mm-hmm. just a, a big ass gap in um, peripheral capability. Okay, so that's why they're gonna pair PC game input detection, and then there's just the ergonomics of a mouse. You're way more. Everyone is way more versed with a mouse than a, a joystick. You you can point at things so much more accurate with a mouse. I think that's. I mean, I think I think that pairing system's fine. Would I, you agree though? Yeah. That PCs would be better. Would you agree that you are more accurate with a mouse than a yeah. joystick? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's Rest a. Fa- I think that's a fair pairing. Wired for sure. A wired yeah, mouse. Yeah, I definitely well, think that's a fair even, pairing. Not even that. Too. It's. I'm saying, person to person accuracy. Would you say? You're well, it's, more, it's literally a flick of your own. Let's say you're browsing Google Google Chrome mm-hmm. or any web browser. You can either do it with a controller or a mouse. Which one do you think you'll be quicker with? Mouse. Yeah, right. Which, which I was going to explain because it's the it's the literally your well, own. You're just more accurate. Time. We grew up. Yeah. We grew at least millennials. We grew up with computers in school and shit. We, yeah. And it's just so much more ergonomic to use your wrist rather than yeah. your thumbs. We, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so anyway. The, they're going to detect input. They're going to pair keyboards and mouses with keyboards and mouses, controllers with controllers. And this, like I said, this is anecdotal. I didn't read, I didn't see anything that argues with what I'm thinking. If you were to join a party with me, they're going to put you with PC gamers. It just makes sense because I'm a PC gamer. Right. They're not going to throw the random PC gamer. I don't know. Maybe they'll throw me into a console lobby. But it seems like they'll throw you. I don't know. In my opinion, it makes more sense that they throw it you into a PC. It wouldn't even lobby. matter what lobby it was. No matter if you're playing, if you're playing with a PC game. If well, it comes in- down to fairness. Like yeah. they'd rather you fail at a PC lobby than me dominate in a console. Well, I think lobby. it's fair to just mix it instead of just having it predominantly. But once again, it's. I would agree, and the sentiment is that PC gamers will dominate the game. I mean, I think that is that fair. No, but. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. But I think console gamers should have the... I mean, it, in my opinion, there should be a setting. Pair with everyone, pair with your input. Okay. But, I mean, you come into that problem when you can cross-platform. Yeah, like I said, yeah. that's why they're going to detect input. Yeah. So, um, I want to now do a segue into my fucking story I've been wanting to tell all this, right, whole, this whole it. goddamn time. It's, all right. I didn't okay. get any rebuttal, rebuttals, so let's go. No, I mean, I agree with you yeah. on everything yeah. you said about it. I mean, I, I don't think it's fair. I'll be um, honest, guys. I'm... <laughs> Jesus, the fuck? That was the... This thing was wobbling. Huh. I am... To, drunk bastard. I am to hosty. <laughs> your, your wine is not doing shit to me, dude. It's not? That you said, one isn't? The pear one? I, I am fine. Gee, you're an alcoholic. You said after the mango you, you were going to be... Well, I thought I was, but I'm, like I'm freaking, fine. It's why don't you stand crazy. up for a minute? I don't want to do that. I'm on, go. Well, okay, mm. let's clarify. I'm on my fifth glass. Okay, Ooh. well, I'm on my... Shit. shit. How many deep am I? So I'm, we took that... You're three. Hang on. We took that you're, shot. You're two mangoes. I had the shot, Shot, too. two mangoes. The shot's the baseline. You're two mangoes and, a pe- and half a pear. Dude, deep. I was feeling off a of one. So I'm four. I'm I'm five glasses and a shot. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, yeah. Like Harrison said, well, I'm an alcoholic. Huh? You so. want some pear? Nah, I'm Gucci. I gotta drive home. Oh shit! Oh, shit. I didn't think. I didn't realize you were driving home. Um, yeah. yeah it, like for us, it's late. It's like one thirty in the fucking morning. I don't know. It is, yeah. We'll post these podcasts the week after we do them. Oh, and by the way, it's a weekly thing now. So fucking be looking out for that shit. <laughs> um. So I want to segue into my story that I wanted to tell. Right, so, um, I, today, on the day we do our first podcast, which is fucking cool, um, 
So for the people who don't know, I was helping my buddy Zach, which you'll see Zach on here. He's just super talkative dude. He's fucking he's really good. He's natural on camera. Zach, fucking Zach, biggest piece Zach of shit. Zach kills it on podcast. No one, no one, the nation doesn't know it yet, but Zach's the national Zach, treasure. Yeah. Literally, they're gonna be like, hey, that Trevor King minor dude, kick him off of the fucking host and make Zach. Zach is a natural at this shit. It's, Zach is great. It's weird. It's I'm envious. Yeah, no, he he fucking he killed it when we did that practice podcast. Which, by the way, we will put out that practice podcast randomly somewhere in between a couple episodes. And he's funny in his demeanor, I don't dude. Know. Zach's we can, natural. Do, we can do a podcast talking about Zach one Dude, day. <laughs> fucking biggest dick on this side of the Mason Dixon. Talk. <laughs> uh, anyways. Baby's um, arm holding an so, apple. So My Zach, arm holding an apple. Zach and his girl just moved into this badass apartment in Dallas. Fucking gorgeous. Great view. Anyways, I'm helping I'm helping him move in. And um I work up a little bit of a sweat. I'm like, you know what? That pool down there that you got in there is fucking badass. I'm gonna go chill at that pool. Um, and so I did, and I, I, I'm just sitting there, and this family walks up. And Zach's, Zach's what, you just fucking God damn I'm bleeping it. that out. I 100 percent am bleeping that out. What a piece of shit. Anyways, Zach's the guy by the pool. Yeah, the guy by the pool. So this this family walks up. This guy's family walks up, and I'm sitting there, and I look at the dude, and I'm like, and he's wearing he's wearing a he's wearing like a beret hat, and I'm like, that guy looks so familiar. I was like, where do I? I was like. All of a sudden, I'm looking. I'm like, that guy looks like that guy looks a lot like Christopher Sabat. And for the people who don't know who that guy is, if you know anything about Dragon Ball Z, if you're a hard fan of Dragon Ball Z, you know who Christopher Sabat is. He is the voice of several characters. He's the voice of the main two, Piccolo and Vegeta. Um, I'm nerding out here. I fucking love Dragon Ball Z. We all, everyone in this room right now, fucking loves well, Dragon Ball Z. Who doesn't like at least like Dragon Ball Z? If you're a dude in our about our it's age, like you like you like Dragon Ball Z. Dragon it's like everyone's Ball Z, first anime. Dragon Ball Z is the pioneer of an anime cliche. Yeah. Dra- Dragon Ball Z invented I, the yelling to power I up. Fucking, Dragon Ball Z yeah. is this nation's. Background. Maybe they didn't invent it, but they pioneered. Fucking it. love Dragon Ball Z. Have shirts. I'm a nerd when it comes to that shit. Thank you, Thank you, Tsunami. Goku's speech to Frieza is poetry. Yeah. Either way. Everyone so, knows what this means as soon as you do it. Yeah, <laughs> tell me that. Or this. If, if you do this or this, everyone knows what the fuck. This right? is the biggest nerd thing. People are gonna watch this. And be like, all right, no. I'm out. I'm out. Over nine thousand. <laughs> I'm out here. They were cool right. until they yeah, started talking about this shit. And now they're a bunch I'm of fucking. I'm just saying, nerds. Dragon Ball Z pioneered it, yeah, the sure. genre of so, so underdog. So you, so anyways, if you know Dragon Ball Z and you're a big fan, you know who Christopher Sabat is. He's the voice of the main. The main one is Vegeta and Piccolo, and I think he voices Yamcha too. I'm pretty I think sure. So. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure he voices Yamcha. Yeah, because he matters. And so, but he's also so. Anyways, he he's also a big he he like uh, does a lot of voice direction. He has his own studio, and he's kind of in charge of making sure that the animation lines up with their voices. So th- they call him the flaps of uh, like when they talk. So you know how when they talk, they're never actually like you never see their mouth form because it's in Japanese originally. It just kind of like opens and closes. He's responsible for making sure all that shit lines up, and oh. he's responsible for all the recording. He's he's actually a pretty big dude. He's pretty important when it comes to. The filming of Dragon Ball Z and the games. Um, so I'm so. Anyways, I'm sitting there, and I look at the I look at the dude. And I'm like, is that fucking Christopher Sabat? That looks just like Christopher Sabat. And I'm like, there's no way. There's there's no fucking way. I'm just chilling because I was almost I was falling asleep at the chair and I woke up and I saw the dude and I'm like, oh shit. And so I'm like, nah. So I look up pictures of Christopher Sabat and I look at the dude. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking close. And then so I like so then I Google. I was like, okay, where? So then I click on his Wikipedia. I was like, where does the guy live? Dallas, Texas. No way. Dallas, Texas. And I'm like, no way. There's no fucking... And literally, at that moment, I was like, all right, let me, let me let me hear him talk. Let me just hear him. If I hear his voice, <laughs> I'll know if it's him or not. And he called out. He said something to one of his kids. I can't remember. He was like, oh, no, no. I was like, oh, my God, that's him. <laughs> that's so cool. I was like, holy Child. shit. And so I'm sitting there. <laughs> what, and I'm, what an obscure celebrity. Dude. That's but but I knew up. exactly what he looked like though, because I'm a big nerd when it comes to voice actors. I fucking I mean, I, Mark every time, Hamill. I know that guy. Like when I when I watch when I watch a show the that EA I really like, guy. I'll go and I'll, I'll research all that shit on <laughs> IMDb, and I can tell you a lot of voice actors. Um, so yeah, I knew what the guy looked like, and I was like, holy shit! So immediately, like I got nervous immediately, because I was like, I'm gonna say something to this guy. So I I like dry off, and I'm like putting the towel over me, and I, and I walk over to him, and um, I had had an interaction with his wife in the apartment complex. Um, when we were moving the shit in and out, she was out walking the dog, and the dog's tail was like dyed purple, no pink. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hey, I like the I like like the dog's tail," and just kept walking. And so, so I walk up and I'm like, "Hey, how are y'all doing?" 
And the dude looks at me. He's like, in in, in the almost, he sounds like Piccolo when he talks, but just not oh. quite as, <laughs> yeah. not quite as like deep. I'm doing yeah, good. Yeah, he's like, he's like, we're doing good, man. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah. And I and I was just like, and I look at him, and I, and like he can see the realization on my face. I'm like, are you, are you Christopher Sabat? And he's like, yes, I am, man. Yes, I am. And I'm like, find out in the next episode, <laughs> <laughs> dude. He goes, and. Maybe. And I immediately, Am I'm I like Christopher Sabbath, and I'm like starstruck. I'm like, dude, I'm Trevor, man. It's so nice to meet you. And dude, I fucking, I'm Trevor. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm Trevor. It's nice to meet you, man. And I shake his hand. He's like Trevor, and I'm like, yeah. And he was, and we just started talking. He was like, he's like, oh, so you live here? And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just helping my friend move in. And he's like, oh, cool. And he's like, so what? Are you, what are you a fan of? And well, he he's prefaced it. He's like, oh, we're just living here until our our house is done being remodeled or whatnot. Cool. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, man. And he. He's fucking around with his wife. Let me clarify, this is actually the voice of Piccolo and Vegeta. One hundred, one thousand percent. This so, is actually him. Yes. So, okay. so, so then, th- so uh, to prove that further, uh, I'm talking. If you hear him talk, you're like, oh yeah, hundred percent. Like, there's no <clears> way. Pause. Screen recording. Let's look up Christopher Sabbath. Sabbath. I want to know what he looks like. Okay. Uh, we'll pause. You said he's white, didn't he? Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. We'll start the screen recording. Uh, let me. Oh shit. Hang on. I gotta go to the quick time. Quick, quick time. There we go. We, we should, we're all new with this shit. We don't. We know should. What the fuck we should doing. segue into famous people we've met too. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, new screen recording. I wanted to talk about that myself. How yeah. to interact with them. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I'm gonna go into that with how I how I was talking to the dude. Um. Boom. Thing. All right. So we're looking up Christopher Sabbert right now. Um. It'd be cool if he fucking saw. That would be badass. <laughs> <laughs> if he Shouts saw out. this. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for making. I'll my just fucking send. I'll just fucking send him a tweet like, hey. You didn't um, happen to get any contact in footage. Huh? You didn't happen to get any contact info? No, that was. I, I'll tell you how I played it. I played it off. I was trying to be super chill because I didn't want to be that guy. Who exactly. Was like, yeah. So, so it, let me. Uh, so, Christopher C H R I S T O V Christopher. I don't know if that was spelled right. S A B Sat it. Um, okay, that's what I remember. I, I know I've seen them do the voice acting. Yeah, so once. like this dude is, like, and, and so that's, pretty much that's such an unrecognizable face. It's interesting that you recognize. Okay, no, it. no re- offense, but he looks reason, like a normal guy with the, the beard. The reason I recognize looks him, just like Jason. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we have a good friend Jason. He looks like this. Uh, so did this he have is, the beard? This yeah. So this is exactly what he looks like. I mean, his beard was a bit more gray, and I, I don't even know if he's wearing. He's wearing a hat, very similar, and I'm like. That guy looks like that. Looks like the voice actor for whatever. So how's your conversation go? And so yeah, so this is what he looks like. And um, so I walk up to him. I'm like, oh, "Are you Christopher Sabat?" And he and we and we start talking and, and whatnot. And he's like, "So he's like, so what were you a fan of, man? Were you a fan of Dragon Ball or like?" And then he named this new project that he's working on or whatnot. And I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I was I was a huge fan of Dragon Ball growing up, and I watched Full Metal Alchemist too." Uh, he was in F- who was he in FMA? Uh, Armstrong. No shit. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, he was Armstrong. I didn't know that. Yeah. So how? What other animes has he been in that I might that There's we might right know? There. Well, There's here's like a little picture yeah. of some oh, of the people no he played. Oh no shit! He was genuine. He well, was. Yeah. Got the other one. Was I was one? thinking Which Mustang one? for one? a second. Yeah. I was. Oh, thinking... he's fucking Shinron too. That's cool. He's got that deep, powerful yeah, I voice. Think, is that from Yu Yu Hakusho? Yes, I think so. God, I haven't seen that show. Wow. In a minute. Yeah, dude. Fucking he. Jeez. He's a badass man. Um, is that the guy from One Piece? I don't know. Yeah, that's that's yeah the swordsman. I don't remember his name, but he was either. the expert swordsman. They recruited him very early yeah. on in the show. So so we started talking. He was like he was like so yeah you you a fan of you a fan of Dragon Ball or, or what? I'm like yeah dude I was a huge fan of Dragon Ball. I loved I loved it Full Metal Alchemist too. He's like oh that's cool man. And um, we started we started getting to talking about uh, uh kind of about that. I was like so what are you I was like so what, what are you working on right now? You got any you got any new projects or anything that you're doing? He's like yeah we're working on this um this show i can't remember what he i can't remember the name of it but if i look it up some kind of like some like hero show i can't even remember my hero academia that's it yes he's that's working. a very very popular anime right now yeah and he was telling me it's he was been like, going for about three or four years yeah and he was telling me he was like he was like oh you haven't seen that i was like no he's like oh dude you should Who, fight, did he, was, he say who his character was look it up um was he all right. might i don't know Let me oh see. my god that's that's insane yeah. I, I watched the first season imdb okay that's so cool, man. He's been in a lot more than I thought. Oh, dude, yeah, he's a big voice actor. He's a man of many voices. There's a there's a guy that he does Gara's voice in Naruto, and I noticed I've heard his voice in a lot of other anime. I really want to yeah. know who that is. What you? What My Hero Academia? Yeah. Hero. A C A D. There it is. Oh, there oh it is. yeah, I've seen that anime. Like the, the green haired. Yeah, he's the he's yeah. the second voice listed. So I mean. Oh shit, that's that's a big character then. I imagine All Might, aside from the main character, who's that kid. 
I've never. I've all, down, I have down. the app. I've I'm never. I'm so excited. Christopher Seven. He's All, all Might. Might. Yeah, oh, there we shit. go. Dude. He's got that deep, powerful voice. So All yeah. Might, and I'm going to spoil the show, that kid, his, the, so the, the premise of the show is that, um, I guess one day, it's almost like One Punch Man. Everyone started becoming like powerful, having uh-huh. these unique superpowers. And this kid, he looked up to the character All Might, who was the most powerful hero uh-huh. in the universe. And he, he wanted to be a hero so bad. Well, one day he meets um, All Might, who the the guy's powers basically are um, killing him. You know, he's so powerful, but he's getting old. Yeah. He can't keep up with them. I might be getting this wrong. Some anime fans going to correct me, hopefully. But the kid, the, the guy passes on the powers to the kid, but the guy is, you know, he's the second main character in the show. Yeah. So that's so fucking cool. Yeah, dude. Yeah, so anyways, he was telling me about this, and he was like, oh, yeah, um, I'm doing, we're working on My Hero Academia right now. And then he told me something badass. He was like, and we're working on this other game. It's like an RPG Dragon Ball Z game. And nice. he, kinda, he, was telling me about, he was telling me about some of the mechanics. He's like, well, I don't want to call it an RPG, but it kind of has to be because then there's nothing really stopping anyone. Oh, from- my God. We got in. Let me clarify. Yeah. We have insider Inside, knowledge. Yes. So anyways, so then. So <laughs> this then, podcast can blow up. Anyways. Oh shit! So fucking so then so he's like he's like well I don't want to call it an RPG but I guess it kind of has to be because then there's nothing really stopping anyone from starting the game then running and killing Majin Buu immediately. Trevor, so. you just made this podcast. Yeah. Oh my god. So so fucking so and and I'm just sitting there like <laughs> like on the inside like oh my god I'm you, eating Christmas. He won't talk to you ever again because of this. He's like you you spilled my fucking. Spoilers. I mean he, he never said like rah, 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 and he, he just, never said it was I a asked secret. him yeah I asked him what projects are you working on and he told me this just outright so. Oh my god! He didn't know you ran a podcast, bro. Well, he well, didn't we know need, that he didn't know to, that he's talking to a dude who immediately was starting a podcast later that day. We need to understand something, though. There is a Dragon Ball <laughs> Z so much, RPG. Apparently, game. so much. Well, click, okay, babe. hang on, hang on. So, to be fair, the Xenoverse is kind of like that, right? Because okay, you start fine. off as your own character, so it could be yeah. something pretty similar to that. But, but it's, there, there's been in the works. There, there's been a lot of talk about a better, better, better one. Yeah. For a so, while. so then that's probably it. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, but there's Holy also shit. that Fighter Z game that came out that apparently people really like. Oh, it's trash, in my opinion. Oh, I, I don't like it. Let's continue our story. Yeah, anyway, anyway, so so I'm talking to him about his projects and shit. I like, thought you met a guy that looked like Vegeta. No, I literally... You met Vegeta. I, I, I literally met Vegeta. Oh, you didn't get a picture fuck. with him? No, well, he was... We were at the pool, so oh, he had yeah, his shirt fine. off and shit. And Damn, I was like, I'm not going to yeah. ask him for... That's kind of inappropriate. That's I'm not going to ask him for... That's fine. All right, carry on with the story. So, so um, yeah, so I was asking about his projects and shit like that. And, uh, shit, what else? I, I, had, I had it in my head what I was going to say. Um, he's a new oh yeah so RPG. i was i was talking so i was like so yeah i was like so you do all like the voice direction and shit like that right and he's like yeah i've got my own he's like i got my own studio he's like for the most part people do it for me now all the recordings and, and whatnot but i have my own studio where we do that and i was like okay because i watched some old i watched a, a video with you uh like it was the making of one of the games and uh you seemed like you were kind of in charge of everything and he was like oh yeah he was like yeah we do all of the games I, he's like I record all of the games and then he was like oh well, Dragon Ball Z games yeah and he was like you're okay. probably thinking of the uh, the old that old video uh, with uh, Budokai 3 and I was like yeah that's the exact one I watched and he was like oh yeah and he kind of went on about that a little bit so yeah we were just fucking sitting we were just sitting talking have a casual conversation and I wasn't I wasn't dog, gonna be, dog I'm so excited dude, for you I, I was that's like so cool. freaking I was so nervous Trevor, talking can to you, him can you go can you do podcast. me a favor and find out if he's done any voice work on Naruto. He if not, have. I won't be upset. If he has, I'll be super excited. I, I will, but uh, hang on. So so then, I mean, so we were just kind of talking, just like slightly bullshitting for the most part. I was kind of telling him like what I was doing. He's like, and so he's like, so you live here? I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just helping my friend move in. And he was like, he's like, well, if you're having your friend move in, he's like, you'll probably, you'll probably see us around. Uh, or it was like, well, if you're here seeing your friend, you'll probably see us around like quite a bit. Like, you know, we're just kind of, we're just here until our house gets done. And I was like, yeah, man. I mean, if I if I run into y'all or whatnot, and y'all ever want to have a drink or something, I'd be totally down. He's like, yeah, and he was like, yeah, man. That'd Trevor, be cool. God, Trevor, I hate to be that guy. Please, please, please invite let me. Let me go out to a <laughs> yes. drink with this guy. Please. So look, look, so he was probably. He, I know, I know, he's just being nice, but 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 still, I, I made the offer. I was like, yeah, if you guys ever wanted to do that or whatnot, it'd be cool. If I ever ran into y'all or whatnot, he's like, yeah, man, that'd be cool. And I was like, um, oh I was like, gosh. yeah, well, I was like, dude, it was, it was super nice to meet you. Uh, and I shook his hand again. I was like, super, like big fan, big fan. And he was like, thanks, man, appreciate that. And I just walked off. I was like, I wasn't gonna be the dude who's like. Please do the voice. Or, or okay, to, look, that's the right way to do it. Yeah. Look, that's something I wanted to segue into, and I still want to know about the Naruto voices. Okay, so I'm going to sidetrack a little bit, but come back to the point. Trevor and I are very big into pop punk, right? So it's it's modern age punk rock. Harrison, he's into it. Yeah. Not not quite much. It's fine. But, like, you know, that's we, like... We, we've all fanboyed a little bit. Yeah. That's our main playlist. Yeah. Right. And so... 
I've met a few big names. Parker Cannon, <laughs> and I don't know his name. His name's like uh, Toby or something. Uh-huh. The guy from Trash Boat. Oh. You've also met and talked to the main singer of Movements. We fucked around yeah, with him at Patrick. the Patrick. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. And so I, I noticed, and this is just being completely self-aware, I try not to be a, a cliche fan. I like to thank people for their work. I appreciate them, but I don't want to bombard people. So yeah. I met Parker Cannon, the lead singer of the story so far, once. And I remember waiting in line, and he was just talking to this girl who was just freaking flustered. He was like, hey, calm down. How old are you? And she goes, oh, I'm, I'm 22. I'm 21 or something. He goes, I'm only... I'm 23. I'm almost 24, but I'm only 23. It's cool. We're the same age. Like, just chill, man. We're cool. And I was like, oh, Parker Cannon? That guy's nice. Yeah. Pause. You can stop the screen recording. Oh, yeah. That's probably good. My computer's on fire. Yeah. I can you know, you say he's nice, but... I'm going to get back to that. Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> Where's the fucking... No, no he's I a good guy. Not to fuck with him. There we go. You guys don't... You keep going. And I was like, all right, cool. It's my turn. And I had I bought a thirty dollar hat. I will never buy a thirty dollar hat again. But I was like Parker Cannon's. Look, I hate to say it. I try so hard to not fawn over celebrities. I think that's stupid because they're just like Same. us. Yeah, they're normal people. They're just going back oh. and forth. From but we have other a, people in this apartment. But when there's a band that you've stuck with for the last decade, that look even even being self righteous, songs don't usually speak to me. But the story so far has a song that has spoke to me. It's called Four Years. I joined the military for four years. Look it up. It makes a lot of sense. I was like, fuck. This is the guy I've been listening to for, you know, seven, eight years. And I finally get to meet him. But I was like, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be like, who's sing for me, dude? Anyway, I get up there. And I'm, you know, I'm with another friend. This is in Little Rock, Arkansas. And he's a huge fan. I was like, dude, Parker, thanks so much for playing tonight. You're so cool. Can I get a picture, man? He's like, yeah, of course. I'm Parker Cannon. You can get a picture. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was like, you know, my friend was following with the camera. I was like, just take the picture. And Parker laughed, and I was super proud of that. <laughs> and he signed my hat. But I noticed even with Patrick and the guy from um, Toby, the I, I hope I'm not getting his name wrong, the guy from um, Trash no Boat. Idea. Like, I, I want to be... I want to be the guy that just like thank you, yeah. have a good day. You know, I want to treat people like yeah. my friends, and so that's what I'm getting into. So you know, when I met, went and met Patrick, you know, it was after the show. We had been drinking at a bar for an hour. Did you know this story? Drunk, I so. dude. I was we, drunk Trevor off was, my Trevor ass. Trevor was trashed. John picked us up, but we got down at this bar and we come out waiting for John to pick us up. I'm like, hey, there's the uh, movements over there packing up their gear. And Trevor's like, oh, that's cool. I was like, I'm gonna go say hi. And so I run across the street. I shake Patrick's hand. I'm like, hey, man, yo, thanks so much for playing tonight. I'll, you guys are great. You killed it. I appreciate it. He's like, yeah, man, thanks. Thanks for enjoying us. And same with the the guy when we were at the show. Toby. Or I bought a Toby. Boston Manor shirt, right? And But I had my story so far hat on because my hair gets so sweaty. I don't like to keep doing this to not look like a dumbass. And I was like, hey, I know this is like a different band. Can you sign this hat? And he was like, yeah, of course. I'm sorry, he's British. Yeah, of course. Oh, mate, put your fucking boy hands up. <laughs> well, that's Australian. <laughs> but I was like, he signs. I'm like, hey, sorry, so sweaty dog. He's like, it's cool. Shake hands. That's the thing. So but I think guys. it's in. What? The, the, the put your fucking bloody hands up. That's that's his thing. Put your mo- boy hands well, when up. When he fucking open this fucking pit. Yeah. Mate. Every time he, every time he mocks a British dude, he immediately goes to. Uh, he tries to mimic the guy I'm from sorry. Boston my, Manor. My two favorite pop punk bands outside of the story so far: Boston Manor, Trash Boat. They're from yeah. the UK. Anyway, I think it, it it's important to me to not like be generic. I don't I don't know. Look, like I'm I'm not these guys, but I feel like like I said, perspective. If I was yeah. in their shoes, I'd be like, fuck, another another right. person just yeah, fawning ex- over me. Exactly. And 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 so I f- I don't know. I find it liberating even though I'm not them. It's it's fanboyish in the, in itself how I try not to be a fanboy. Right. I'm trying yeah. to be self-aware. Yeah. Like I'm no, a fan, exactly. I'm a fanboy yes. at trying to not be a fanboy. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll shake their hand and I'll say thank you. I don't know. I think it, if I was famous and everyone all the time was like, "Can I get a picture? You're so cool. I love you. Can you call my mom?" It's like that sounds annoying. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I, if I were famous for the work I put out, I just want people to say thank you. Yeah. 
Well, I think so that, you would want people to view for. you as a human. Exactly. Because right. they're not, so often not, viewed as this icon. Exa- yeah. I was going to say the word icon, too. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be an icon. That's weird. Yeah, no, and, and like that was the exact way because I, May- I, I've i seen, I've been in the same vicinity as Christopher Sabbath. I've seen Christopher Sabbath before. Oh, really? When I went uh, to Comic-Con because he was there. He had a booth. And people were lining mm. up in droves to talk to him. And, like, I, I remember seeing this dude, like, talking to him. And, and, you know, Christopher, he was just sitting there, like, you know, like, smiling. I, I mean, I don't know the context, but from what I saw, he was just smiling, like, watching the dude. But the dude was, like, super animated, like, clearly talking about Dragon Ball Z, freaking the fuck out. He was like, and he was just, like, doing all this crazy shit. And, I'm, like, I remember feeling bad for the dude at the time. This was years ago. This was, like, 2015. And I was like... Man, I feel bad. Like he's just this voice of this dude. And this guy's coming up, just like fucking losing his shit. Like that must be cool, eh? But and they're, also, they're like, used to it, right? They're public yeah. figures. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, so I feel like, and once again, personally, it feels it seems like it'd be exhausting. Yeah. No. No. Zach and well, I have had a conversation about paparazzi before, and like a lot of people, I think, kind of get in the mindset of like, oh, well, they're celebrity and like they're famous because of their fans. Like they should want to take a picture. Fuck. Like, they're all human. Beings. Look, if you have a they're passion, the the if you enjoy acting, you have a passion for it. You yeah. have no obligation to the fans. No. If your fans started a GoFundMe and you got big from that, okay, fine. Pay it forward. But Yeah. No, and, and but I disagree because I feel like there there does while the lifestyle while the lifestyle is glamorous in a way depending on who you are. Yeah. The, the the fact that you can't you like you you have zero modicum of privacy anymore. Everywhere you go, and especially if you're someone like who who is let's say Kardashian level famous, like everyone knows who the fuck you are. Yeah, I, Kanye's I mean, gone off on paparazzi. Pa- yeah, paparazzi. Look, I don't support Kanye for being a ego to, egotistical douche, but like, chill out, man. Dude, He's dude, just the a paparazzi person. are fucking insane. They're yeah, vultures. They're, they're literally vultures. They're that, that's what they are. And, and like, to be yeah, fair, if I had to deal with that all the time, anywhere I go, wait. everyone like. Everyone coming up to me constantly, interrupting my conversations, interrupting Six. my dinner. Yes, that's fucking, let's go. You want more? Interrupting my conversations, interrupting my dinners with my family. Fucking, oh, can I get a picture? And walking outside and the paparazzi's like flashing and you're asking them to stop. Like, hey, please. Something ple- you have to remember. Please stop. And they don't do it. Is that a lot of these people pay paparazzi. That is true. And we yeah, talked, like Zach TMZ, and I talked about their, that too. Their livelihood comes off of selling videos to TMZ. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So absolutely. like they require, I get it. Yeah. Like you. No, there, there, there's two sides. You got to make money by hounding Kanye. Right. But like, make an honest living. Don't annoy yeah. people for a living. Yeah. You I, know what's funny? Yeah. I met. Uh, I went to this thing called Texas Frightmare, and out of nowhere, I ended up meeting the hitchhiker from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Really? And well, that's another niche thing that like only you yeah. would fawn over. Right? And like, well, like, I mean, punk a music. lot of those like Texas Frightmare is like Comic Con. Well. I would say it's like comic. It's kind of like Comic Con. The Texas Frightmare thing is more of a meet and greet than anything. And it's I met. I almost met Rip Flair while I was there too. For some reason, he was Let there. Let me pause. Do you like? Do you like them pair? I don't mind the pair. Do at you all. enjoy it? I think. I, it, it, my big thing is that is I kind of ruined. I ruined. Yeah, it's, it's recording. Okay. It's just it's a little lossy. Oh. Um, I ruined wine for myself a couple years ago because I drank a whole bottle to myself. Is this exactly like wine to you? To no. To me, it's. It's got a wine taste, but it's not it's not so like wine flavory that I'm like, oh man, this is wine. It's like I, I can I can yeah, drink a whole bottle of this. You can't taste grapes in it, can you? No, not really. But it has the the impact of wine. Yes, it has that same kind of familiar taste, but it's not like overbearing. So I I enjoy, I could drink this. This is All no right. problem. But, All right, back to Harrison. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even know it was him at first because I wasn't looking for him. In fact, I didn't even know he was there. And I was walking by, and. He's really tall, and he kind of is built a little weird. Like, he, yeah. that's just how he was. And I I would probably remember his face. Who was he? I'm the sorry. Hitchhiker from the original, okay. like, 1974. Was that a big five? role? I think so. It was a weird in role. The, in the movie, was it a big role? Yeah, it's pretty minuscule. Well, I, no, minuscule? it's a big role. It's a big role. Okay. I was going to say a big role. Go ahead. Uh, but I kind of, like, bumped into him. I thought he was sitting there waiting because his little area wasn't so big. But no one was around him. And he's like, How's it going, man? And he's like, Good. And he looked like a native Texan guy. So I just thought he was working for someone. And he's like, How's your day been? I'm like, Man, it's been okay. And I was just kind of like, Man, I'm going to be honest with you. And I said, This is kind of one of my first time things. I've never really been to like a Tex, like one of these horror conventions. I said, It's kind of bumming me out. And he's like, Why say that? And I was like, I'll be honest with you. I think it's just a little. I mean, I know that's how they make their living is off of meet and greets most of the time because well, yeah, these movies are in old. In a niche role. Right. Well, and he starts talking, and like I start explaining to him, I was like, I was like, no hate on him. I get the struggle. Like a lot of these movies, like in the eighties, like there's a guy from the Friday the third, or no, the girl that played pa- not Pamela, the uh, 
the woman that decapitated Pamela Voorhees. Yeah, yeah she yeah, was yeah. there too. Okay, and she was about. having to sell her new wine that no one knew about to make a nice. profit off of it. Now that's fine, but like, and I started explaining. He's like, "No, I get it, I get it." And he's like, "I mean, no one's at my tent either." And I was like, looking at him, I'm like, "Are, are you from the Texas Chainsaw Mask?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm the hitchhiker." I was like, "Really?" And I was like, "Dude, yeah." He's like. Hey man, he's like, and he was like, hey, I mean, like I said, I come here because I genuinely enjoy like talking to people. He's like, I want a more personal connection. I completely understand. I feel and that. He, and he sat there and he was like, he's like, now he's like, do I think it's right to charge ass loads of money? And he was like, this. Ex- he talked to me like I was talking to you guys right now. He's like, I think it's kind of a sellout thing to do. I was like, Ooh, he's getting deep cuts right now. And he was like, just like, I'm, I would take a picture for free. That's fine, man. And he's like, I don't even care. And he's like, but I agree with you too. You know, I can understand you're trying to be relevant. And it, you have to do what you got to do, but and he says I just enjoy. I, he's like I completely just think that it's amazing people still remember me and just like me for the role that I played, and that's all I think he ever did. I think was that movie, and he was like, "Do you want a picture?" I was like, "I mean, if you don't mind." And he's like, "Yeah, absolutely." And he was like, "What's your favorite?" He's like, "He's like, what's your favorite part of Texas Chainsaw Massacre?" And he, and I was like, "Honestly, I think my favorite part of that movie is the dinner scene." And he's like, and he told me like details I didn't know about that movie. He's like, bro, he's like, it smelled like dig in there. <laughs> and he was like, it smelled awful. And he was like, and he was telling me, dude, like that's a so- cool perspective though, yeah. right? And he was telling me, he's like, dude, he's like, you won't the smell of that. that I remember scene, it's so awful. He was saying that a lot of the like the masks for the movie, a lot of every prop in that movie is real dead animal. I don't know if you knew oh, that. Oh wow! Like the that the bones, par- very uh improper into his society well there's there's a scene where there's some like the, for the the prop guy went and just off the roadkill and just brought it i'm not kidding <laughs> he got roadkill and brought it to the scene okay and now that the, makes more sense now nah, they didn't kill him yeah that's correct. what i thought you were saying no, i'm sorry wasn't let me there, wasn't that. there something weird about the mask that was made that well was like, the mask uh, the mask is still it's holding up very badly because the problem with it gunner henson the guy that played i wish i could have met him rest in peace but he the mask that was made he sweated through because he's a big guy and a lot of the props they had to burn they had to burn them because like in the dinner scene specifically if you've ever seen it it was made in the middle of summer and it was supposed to be a night scene and they had to shoot throughout the day and so what they did was they would get windows and they would black them out Mm. and middle of summer and it was in texas i'm not sure where in texas texas chainsaw but um he was wearing like a full tuxedo like the, there was bones in there. There was a lamp made out of uh, some kind of animal skin that they actually made out of animal skin around a heat lamp. And it was just sitting there, take after take, not being turned off, and it started catching on fire. And it was burnt <laughs> animal skin. And he said, dude, roadkill burnt animal skin is one of the worst things I've ever smelled in my life. I wish he was behind a mask. He didn't. He, no, no, no. He could make expressions. Gunner, Gunner was the the hitchhiker wasn't okay, the, okay. The, he, his host, the guy you talked to wasn't and he said a lot of the reactions you see in that movie are just plain real like yeah. he said people have lost their fucking mind in that set that was an interesting like the shining thing. i remember way, seeing too. a behind the scenes i think you had like a behind the scenes special of friday the 13th and the guy, the director one of the directors or writers was talking tom like, savini probably he said do you remember these hands those are my hands. He yeah, said, these are the yeah. hands that opened the coffin, and then it dawned on me. I was like, "Yeah, these are just a group of friends making a slasher movie." Yeah, yeah. right. They're just, and I think that might be the first time it dawned on me that like these big cult classic um, franchises are just people. Yeah, dude. And so shoot- that's what I want to revert yeah. back to the pop punk scene. Like when I when I shook Patrick's hand, it was just like. He's just a guy, right? You have to. We're that's why I try to. I try to avoid, yeah. you know, fawning over people. Like that must get old. Oh, yeah. Look, I'm not famous. I can only speak anecdotally, but like, I feel like I get tired of that. Yeah, all the, right. all the, all they the, probably, all the forced attention. They probably well, don't yeah. want to. All also, they probably don't want to talk about that all the right? time. It's and like, so, dude, I just got off stage. Can you talk about like how's so my day I going? I specifically remember. Like, so yeah. movements headlined. And look, I don't know if anyone listening is well versed in pop punk, but the the tour was movements headlining, Boston Manor, and then before them was Trash Boat, 
all three bands I'm huge fans of. Who's the first band? Some hardcore band that Drug Church. Drug Church. Y'all saw Drug they Church. They weren't hardcore, were really. But yeah, we saw. Drug yeah, Church. I wasn't. Well, interested. we were That's there. Let me clarify. We were there for Drug Church. All right, and so I'm waiting in line because there was this long sleeve shirt from Boston Manor that I really liked, and I'm a huge fan of them. And then was it? Shout out to Boston I, Manor, they're badass. Yeah, I keep saying Toby. I hope I'm getting it. Can you look it up real quick? Yeah, I'll look it up. I'm not. I'm not starting the stream recording on this one. I'm just gonna fucking. I'll just. And I remember I was just waiting in line for this shirt, and the the, the lead singer of um, Trash Boat was just chatting up with his tur- uh, his merch guy. And no one was really hanging out with him. They all wanted to meet movements because mm-hmm. that was the headline. Toby Duncan. Yeah, you're right. Hell yeah, Toby. And I was like, fuck, I really want to meet this guy, but I don't want to be like pushy. All right, finally, once I buy my shirt, I'm like, hey, dog, thanks for playing. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just repeating myself, but like, they're just people. Yeah. And absolutely. I just wanted to, to thank him as a person for playing this show for us. Sure, I paid for <laughs> it, but I was like, hey, dog. You fucking killed it. This is another... Thank you. And then, you know, I shook his hand, had him sign my hat. But it's just like... You know, when I was overhearing his conversation, he was just cracking jokes I didn't understand. Right. And, you know, it reinforces the thought that, like, he's just a dude. And the same guy, like I said, it, it that's what I realized when watching the behind the scenes of the... Friday 13th. Yeah, it's like, they're just dudes. Well, it's funny you said whose that. Whose ideas got popular. Because I there's a there's a hardcore band that's big called Harm's Way. Yeah. And I recently, I say recently, this was like last year, uh, I, I followed him on Instagram, and he like posts almost every time he goes to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> and it's just funny. It, it, which is weird because they're a huge anti-Christian like Christian band. Okay. But, but their food's good. Oh, that's, Chick-fil-A has oh, good Oh, he won't flex. Chicken. And this dude's- I'll I bite mean, the bullet for food. Anyway, What's but that? so I'll bite the bullet for yeah, food. Look, I don't support. Look, I'm not religious, but like Chick Fil A, hey, that shit slaps. That's God's chicken. <laughs> <laughs> look, if God made chicken, it would be Chick Fil A. And on the second day, he <laughs> fried that hoe. <laughs> but anyway, so <laughs> the the vocalist is like this monstrous Hulk like guy. He's a big motherfucker. He's right? mad. Yeah, I time. remember Harmsley was at uh Warp Tour and I had my friend oh, look him up. Fucking jack. And that guy looks like John Cena. Yeah. He's Joe. He looks he's, like John he's Cena. Dope. So anyway, I followed my Instagram and I was like I was gonna go see him in Oklahoma and I was like, I have a Chick fil A hat from where I used to work. <laughs> and I was like I was like, hold up and I said, I don't use it. I don't fucking love it. So like I was like I hit him up, I DM'd him on Instagram. I was like, hey man, um so I, I know you like Chick. I see that you always post that you're at Chick Fil A. I used to work there, and I have like a black and red hat, and it's like a dad hat. I was like, would you, would you want that? And he was like, oh fuck yeah, dude. Wait, he replied. Yeah, he was. Let like, me sidetrack. Caveat is that the right word? That's a cool caveat for lesser known celebrities. Is that you can communicate oh, yeah. with them? Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Will always Smith, the- if Will Smith was doing a meet and greet in. Um, Dallas, they'd be like, shake their hand. Security's like, hey, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Next guy. Yeah. They're always right. this. Yeah. Guy, Harm's way replied to you, and he's like, well, I want your Chick Fil A. Well, let me tell you the story. So like, he goes, he goes, he's like, oh hell yeah. He's like, dude. He's like, do you? He's like, do you want anything for us? Like, I, I have like six, and he was like, oh shit, all right. And so he said, when you get, he's like, I'll, he's like, I'll see you at the uh, the Oklahoma show. So I pull up, and they're just sitting at the merch table. And I walk up and I was like, hey, man, uh, I think his name's James. Yeah, his name's James. And I was like, here's that hat for you, man. He's like, oh, fuck yeah, dude, thank did you. Did he remember you? Yeah, and he was like, fuck Harrison, yeah. right? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, he's like, you want something from the merch table? So you gave me this hat? And he's like, sure, what do you want? And he's like, we just got these. We that's just, that's cool. as cool as that's Christopher. Cool as what's his name? Christopher? Christopher Sabbath, yeah. That's as cool. It's fucking it's, cool. It was, it was nice. That's but cool. so like he goes, he says, we just got these beanies made and it's like this beanie with like the Christ hands rotting with like a dagger on it. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, fuck and yeah. so I gave it to the him. The saggy beanie. I gave it to him, right? And this is going to sound like a horrible fanboy thing, right? But they were the headliners, right? Uh-huh. They go on. Bro, he has the hat on. Oh! Oh! <laughs> yeah. That's I was fucking like, awesome. Fuck, I was yeah. sitting there and Lainey's like, is that your chick? I was like, yeah. Oh, dude, fuck yeah. that's fucking. Why did you? Why have I never heard this story? That's, that's, that's just the ministry. You're that's right. Fucking cool. You're right. Yeah. We we shouldn't blow out a proportion. But people here's, that are recognized. And here's that's, another thing. When you, it's it's hard. It's hard not to fanboy. There's when another. You, when you look up to someone so much that has made an impact on your life, yeah. it's hard not to be like, yeah. Well, yes, me yeah, also. That, that, see, well, that was that was the thing. And that's how I, I felt with. You know Patrick, Toby, yeah. and Parker. When when I met Christopher, that was the thing. Like I immediately got. Ner- I'm not. I don't. I don't typically get nervous talking to people, but right. I got super nervous talking to him because I'm I like, get nervous because I'm like, this yeah. is the dude 
literally his voice filled my childhood. It, it's my hard. childhood was revolved around let's Dragon say, Ball Z. Well, I mean, let's put it in perspective. Let's say you're Christopher, and he's like, fucking, I love Mission Impossible. I love 007. Yeah. That is my favorite film franchise. And he met, you know, Daniel Craig. He'd feel the same, probably. And so that, that reinforces the point that they're just people. Yeah, yeah, and 100%. you shouldn't, you should try your hardest not to, like, idolize them. But, you know, it's hard to. Like I said, Parker Cannon, the song Four Years, I recommend you look it up. You guys know me. It, it matters a lot with my military right. career. Like, that song, like, spoke to me. And, like, songs don't speak to me, usually. I have a pretty good grasp on my mentality. Mm. I have. But when I met Parker Cannon, I was like, this is, so, this is the guy. So here's the thing I want to do. Um... I want to, we'll, we'll have to cut this because I want to listen to the song and we're on the podcast. We might as well do it. Um, and then after we do that, I'm going to jump cut it. And it's because it's two o'clock. We should probably wrap it up. Okay, fair enough. So let's look up the lyric video. Let's, let's look up, let's mm-hmm. look up the lyric video. And then uh, for the those watching, we can't post, we can't post this because we'll get fucking, if there's any chance of us being able to be monetized for this, we won't be able to do it because. Okay, let me just say, don't take strike. it, don't take it personal on the podcast when you look up the lyric video. Don't take, why would I take it personal? It's a, it's uh, a it okay. speaks about his friends. Gotcha. Okay. Um yeah, so let's fucking we're going to look up that video and then um we're going to jump cut it to the end of this podcast and then we'll fucking we'll go from there. All right, so I think yeah. that's a that's a good ending point. So yeah. if I I don't know how I much note. I don't know how much of fucking all of that I'm going to edit or what I'm going to keep. So here's the ending point right here. Thank you guys so fucking much for those who tuned in and saw our very first episode of the Mo- the very first episode of the Modern Goonies podcast. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Trevor King Minor. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, um, shit, what, Twitter? Yeah, all is Trevor King Minor. Uh, got a song up, uh, Serotonin. Everyone fucking go check that shit out. I'm plugging myself right here. I'm bragging. I don't give a fuck. Uh, do you guys, you, so you guys want to plug anything or? No, sorry, so no. Harrison, you want to plug any of your social um. media accounts? I referred to that I'm in barber school. I'm plugging a little bit of my barber Instagram. It's at cemetery underscore fades. Um, local Grand Prairie barber, student barber, uh, around that area. Um, you can follow me there. I would plug my personal Instagram, but it's X scum diddly umptious X. So you're not gonna find it. You won't find it. Just plugged it. Yeah. Um, I yeah. plug the YouTube channel Sawyer H dot. That'd be S A W Y E R space bar H period. There you go. So he makes a lot of really good uh, I musical do, content. I do. I like to make um, pop songs yeah. into metal. He's or, actually canceled because he make a, he made a six nine song. Dude. Yikes! So, I did make yeah. a six nine song into a hardcore big yikes. metal song, and it came out very well. Yeah. Um, also, check out all of the modern uni shit. Um, I don't think we're not gonna have a website for a little bit, but we are gonna have we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, uh, maybe a Twitter. I think we have a Twitter too. Um, <laughs> We're, we'll be posting on all that shit. Fucking follow us. Uh, hope you enjoyed the very first episode. And we are now. This is now going to be a weekly to bi-weekly thing. I will be posting about it. I will let everyone know. Um, so tune in next week, the next Friday or Saturday, for the next episode of the Modern Goodies Podcast. And vape it for the end. Fucking, I don't have a vape, but here we go. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. That wasn't a great That's show. so dumb. Damn, I wish we didn't do that.